Welcome to the Weekend Live Show. 508 is where I'm from. We run down the biggest stories of the week with you every Saturday night. Let us know in the comments right now where you repping. Patchy Junction, Taunton, Worcester, Long Island, Mantra, South Florida, Webster, Malden, Framingham, Tucson, Lorica, Salem, Gloucester, Moose Up, Connecticut, Charleston, South Carolina, Oslindale, Moose Up, Connecticut, London, Glendale, Arizona, Lynn, Mapleville, Quincy. Hey, what's up? Five away is where I'm from. What the hell was that? You a freaking idiot. Stop telling people that I'm mentally deranged and stupid. Call me Aiden. He's not a doctor, but... Get out of my store, please. You're a fucking loser. You are a loser. You're not a journalist. You're nobody. You're not turtle hair. Don't make such fun of the criminal justice system. NFL on the house. Let's get this party started. And I will not be intimidated, I will not be silenced, and we will continue on our journey for justice for John O'Keefe and for Kyron Green. Tick, tick, boom. Karen Reed has supporters who've shown up in large numbers. Tick, tick, boom. Hard body, body, and not scaring nobody. You make me result to wild, and you must be blind by the diamond side. And want it to be this way, but y'all won't need to try this. So it's no way around it. You the loudest one, it's so quiet. Serving a piece, working we serving the streets. About to go ain't going beast. Bang bang, leave you sleep. This is the first time I think I've ever seen this. An outpouring of support for someone accused of murdering a Boston police officer. Unbelievable situation. Never seen anything like it. Tick tick boom. You can't stop me, so who gon' stop me? You can't stop me, so who gon' stop me? We be disturbing the peace, working we serving the streets, about to go ahead going beast, bang bang leave you sleep. I was muted. Uh, I'm going to get a million text messages now. I'm going to get a million text messages. Don't text me. You don't have to text. How the fuck did I mute that? I didn't mean to do that. No sound on Twitter. No sound anywhere. No sound anywhere. Oh, Twi- Wait, there's a there's a live chat on Turtle now? On Twitter? Twitter has a live chat function? I didn't think we had that. I did not know we had that. Let's see. Oh, cool. Nice. All right, cool. Anyway, um... Yeah, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We, you can hear me now, right? You can't hear me on Rumble. You couldn't hear me on anything. Now we're good. Okay, cool. Anyway, <laughs> let's try that again. I'll tell you what I just said. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Aiden Carney. I am the host of the Turtle Boy Live Show every Tuesday and Saturday night at 9 o'clock. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. Uh, usually it's on Saturdays. Tonight's Sunday, but that's okay. Sometimes, uh, you know, you have plans, you do things. but. Um, yeah, Tuesday and Saturday, but 
you know, my Mark Twain name is Clarence with Emerson. You can follow me on there. Yeah, there's a butt mute. <laughs> you can follow me on there uh, on Facebook. Join the 42,000 other people on there, whatever I'm up to now. Uh, what else? Uh, you Old school turtle riders, they call me Uncle Turtle Boy. Um, I prefer Dr. Because if Jill Biden's a doctor, so am I. You can follow me on Twitter at Dr. Turtle Boy, D-O-C-T-O-R, Turtle Boy on there. Uh, but, you know, some people call me uh, daddy. Uh, that's okay if you do. If you don't, uh, you know, uh, you can call me whatever you want to call me. Just be here every Tuesday and Saturday night at 9 p.m. If you really like Turtle Boy and you want to help us out uh, and you want to kind of get an extra stream every week and you don't like those pop-up ads for 15 bucks a month, you can join turtle club and you get the extra premium stream on Thursday night. You can join the sex cult with us. We have a good time in there. Uh, yeah, the puppy, I get the people asking questions. I'm getting the puppy on next week. So I'll have the puppy here next week. So that's going to be cool. So I'm getting the puppy next week. It's going to be dope. It's going to be awesome. Oh yeah. And before I, uh, forget, Oh, Mike's up. people. Oh, and by the way, happy birthday to Meredith O'Neill from the Canton Nine. She's out there. Everybody wish her a happy birthday today. Uh, she's She, like the others, is still waiting, still waiting to find out if she's going to be charged uh, with witness intimidation for peacefully protesting Chris Albert outside of his mediocre pizza shop like three months ago, and they still haven't decided that out. But uh, happy birthday to Meredith uh, out there. So, all right, cool. Um Anyway, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, if you like the show and you want to donate to it and you want to have your message read, uh, you can click on the link of the button. We can't do super chat. The YouTube doesn't let me do that anymore because I had the wrong opinion about the vaccine mandate a couple of years ago and President doofus face and his uh thoughts on that so I, I i said the wrong thing in august of 2021 and then they took it away from me so you got to click at the link at the top and that's for something called turtle chat we just built our own platform no biggie because youtube takes like 30 or 40 percent it's a rip off anyway um but yeah so uh you know you can click on that you can donate whatever money you want i will get a notification and i will read it out loud to the class or you can cash at me at dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy, and I will get that notification on my phone over here, and I'll read those out loud to the class as well, okay? And by the way, keep me periodically updated on the scores of the games. I'm obviously interested in that. Love college ball. Uh, my son's into it big time this year uh, for the first time, so uh, it's cool to uh, – he's got a bracket. I spent all weekend with him, and uh, he's, like, loving it, loving his bracket, so – He's in like he's he he did and the Turtle Boy thing. He's the he's the first Turtle Boy account. He's beaten me and he's six. So good for him. Okay, all right. Anyway, um, we have a lot of fun stuff to do tonight. Let's we got a couple turtle chats to read here. Let me start with Rose sent seven bucks and said Nicole Albert googled Hoss Long for my husband's Viagra to kick in at two twenty seven a.m. Shame on the Alberts. Keep being you, Turtle Boy. Nothing I hate more than jealous fupa cows and cheese hogs. Stay beautiful, Karen Reed. Okay, good. Excellent. So thank you very much, Rose. Uh, we also got a dono here from Deanna. Sends 20 bucks and goes, love you, A. P.S. Mediocre lawyers from Hyannis got nothing on my boyfriend, David Yanetti. Things are getting weird and totally out of control with these accusations. It's time for the sun to shine. Sunlight is said to be the biggest disinfectant. Yeah. The, so there's this lawyer, um, Peter Espessi. He comments on our page sometimes. He's actually been following Turtle Boy for years. And he's turned into somewhat of a troll with this because he's buddies with Ken Mello, I think, in Reddington. And uh, he had a tweet yesterday. Let me just read this to you. Like, I laughed so hard. This is a tweet he put up. And he goes, I'm absolutely as good as Yanetti. He wrote that. I'm absolutely as good as Yanetti, except he probably charges a much lower hourly rate than whatever David charges because that's his value. Like if you, you know, it is what it is. Um, and he goes, I'm not anything like Alan Jackson because I take the rules of ethics seriously and respect them. Unlike him. Really? What Peter, what? ethical violations has Alan Jackson committed and has he been sanctioned? Why does he still have his pro hoc Vichy status and who's hiring you to do anything, Peter? Like this is a high profile murder case and David Yanetti was chosen, not you. And I think, I think it's worked out pretty well. If you have to write, if you have to go on Twitter and announce that like, I'm a, I'm a 
least as good as this guy. You're probably not. You probably have insecurity issues. It's not a good look, Peter. Just is what it is. Like, you don't see Kevin Reddington saying that. You don't see Kevin because he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. His, his profile, his, uh, you know, his history speaks for itself. Like, whenever some people are in a jam, high profile people are in a jam, they tend to call Reddington. It is what it is. And so I, that's the kind of guy, you know. I mean, I, he's a, he's an interesting guy. I still think the, the, the Reddington edition, like when he first came on, remember he told me he wanted to like, you don't want to dance with me, turtle boy or something like that. He kind of like picked a fight with me at first. He, he had to be drunk. He, I still think he was drunk, but then ever since then, he's like been very nice to me. Now, some people are saying to me that, oh, you can't trust Reddington. I'm not telling him secrets and shit. Like, we're, but he's like, he wrote to me in jail like three times. He wrote like really nice things to me in jail. Like that. He's like, you know, you're not going, he, he says, I'm not, he's like, I would, he's not worried about my charges. Like he knows I'm innocent. He knows that these charges are complete bullshit. And again, if he like wanted something from me, that might be something, right? If I had to be like, you know, like he's doing this shit, saying this stuff, and then I'm giving him something. I get that. That might, that, but he doesn't want anything in return for me. So what the fuck do I care? What the fuck do I care? You know? So um, yeah, he says nothing but good things about me. So I got, again, I can only judge people on how they judge, treat me. He treats me well. So, uh, again, I'm not like, you know, buddy, buddy with them. I'm not telling them state secrets or anything like that, but you know, he's, he's nice to me. So anyway, um, what was I going to say here? Uh, yeah. So yeah. Do we have any, I got a couple cash apps here. Got to read, uh, that have come in. We got one from Casey sends three dollars and thirty three cents and says, "Hey, Daddy Turtle from Brandy and Case." So thank you very much, Case. Uh, Alan Alien Mermaid sends ten bucks and says, "Freedom and protecting the Constitution." Absolutely. Uh, Jane sends twenty dollars and says, "Journalism is not a crime." Free Karen Reed. Yeah. Did you guys watch me on Shaun of the Gulf? What'd you guys think? What'd you guys think of uh, of the Shaun of the Gulf thing? I thought it was good. I thought it was good. I, like I told Sean, uh, what I like most about him is, is, uh, you know, the fact that he's a former cop, he's got some, look at these thumbs up. You guys see this is going on now. That's wild. Is, uh, the, his former background as a cop, as far as like investigating the murder scene and what went wrong there. But also I like his optimism more than anything. Like I, I, I'm an optimistic guy in those 20 days heading up to my hearing in court where they were going to, I knew they were going to try to send me back to jail. All I wanted to hear from people, and I didn't give a shit if it was untrue or not, if they meant it, I really appreciated when people told me, you're not going back to jail. I just needed to hear that. Like what that does for you mentally, like when people are like, yeah, I don't know, they're going to try to send you back or like, I don't need to hear that. I don't need negativity in my life, right? If it happens, it happens. But in the 20 days leading up to that, I only needed to hear positivity. And what I like about Sean is on, on social media, the dude is fully confident that these people are going down. Cause I'm not going to lie. Like who doesn't have like the longer it goes, you're like, can you please just fucking jump in? And can you, can you hurry that you're poking the stick at feds? Come on, come on, let's go. And he just never loses uh, confidence and neither does Karen Reed. They both are extremely confident people and I'm a confident guy or I'm, I'm like, I sometimes I let my worries take over. And so I just enjoy his confidence. And when I was in jail, People would, Jennifer Hartford would always send me these screen records, uh, these videograms, these 30 second videos, and it would be screen records of Twitter. Cause I missed the internet. I missed reading the back and forth. And he was just slaying trolls left and right, taking them down one by one. That's what I like about him on there is positivity. So, uh, yeah, he's a good hype man. Uh, he's a great hype man. That's what I like about it. Good hype man. So, okay. Um, so yeah. There we go. And, you know, cause a lot of us have been, and I know the young, I know Mike got, a, it's like, sometimes you get, you're like, Oh, is this ever, is this going to get bad for me? Whatever. Sean's never loses his confidence. So it's nice to see that. Okay, cool. All right. Again, if anyone else wants to donate, you can click at the link at the top for turtle chat, donate whatever amount of money you want. And I will get that notification in my inbox and read it out loud periodically throughout the show. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so, Let's get started, shall we? Uh, so I have something here. Hold on. All right. So this weird, creepy. All right. So look, the house that I moved into is uh, fully furnished, right? And um, it's that's the reason I moved in because I'm like, I don't want to get 
a whole, I don't want to buy furniture. It's going to be a pain in the ass. I want to buy a house eventually. Um, and so I just don't want to like rent and buy all this is pain in the ass. So the house is fully furnished, but, and I'm talking about like, like they didn't take anything down. They didn't take anything down. Like the family pictures are still up and shit. And there's a lot of like old people stuff in here. Like the furniture is a lot of old people stuff. And there's these fucking creepy dolls. Like, look at this fucking thing. What the fuck is this thing? What is this thing? So I'm going to have sex with this thing tonight. Okay. And we are, cause we're going to reenact the butt dial. The, Cause again, it, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe that they're telling the truth about this. We're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. So I, this is Nicole Albert. Okay. And I'm Brian. And we're going to see if we can, but I've got, I entered someone into my phone as Higgins and we're going to see if we can call them while taking a pounder and we'll try different positions too. Like what position was Nicole in and Brian in when they butt dialed? Like, because I thought it couldn't be doggy. It doesn't make any sense if it's doggy because where's the phone? Is it, it would, you'd feel it on your knee right? Cause there's a lot of knee in doggy, right? Or like, I, I don't know, I guess sometimes it's fun when they just lay down flat on their stomach. Like that's a good one too. Um, so I suppose that could happen a little bit more, but like doggy, it's a lot of like, you know, it's a 90 degree angle. It just seems unlikely. It seems unlikely. Uh, missionary possibly, possibly, I think more likely riding would be one if she was riding him or maybe some reverse cowgirl. I don't know. We're going to try different positions tonight. We're going to see what happens. We'll see if there's any particular sexual, like, you know, sexual position that ends up where I call my buddy Higgins. We're going to find out tonight. So we're going to get to that. Okay. So anyway, and who doesn't have passcode? Yeah, we'll see. About that too. Maybe I'll get rid of my passcode. Okay. All right. Anyway, guys. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, so I haven't had a chance. I know this is kind of old news at this point, but I haven't had a chance to do a show on the hearing yet. Okay. I say, I didn't want to do a turtle club night. I wanted to save it for you people for the show. And cause I I've watched the hearing several times now, and I've got a lot of uh, opinions and thoughts on it. Now I also have opinions and thoughts about what's going to happen on Tuesday. Um, I, I believe it's a nine o'clock hearing on Tuesday. Uh, and I think bombs are going to drop. And I asked Sean in the show, do you think that Jennifer McCabe's going to be there? Because she doesn't show. It seems like she knows when bombs are going to drop and she doesn't show up that day because it's going to be awkward. So I don't know if she's going to show up Tuesday or not. If that psychopath is, you know, or not. But, you know, I'm not saying I'm not announcing whether or not I'm going or not. I will no longer announce my plans because people fucking plan what they're doing based around what I'm going to say. So I'm just going to leave it up in the air as I don't. Maybe I'm going, maybe I'm not, I'm not going to say, so we'll find out Tuesday if I'm going to be there because you know, like I have a right to be there and we're going to get this fixed eventually and get the stupid order amended uh, because it's obviously being exploited. Obviously everybody knows that. Um, and I have a right to be there. You know, I, I cover this case. I was the guy on TV every week making the facial reactions. Every time Adam Lally said something stupid, that was my thing. Right. And this was taken away from me by somebody who has absolutely nothing to do with this and is just doing it out of spite to prevent me, obviously, from going to the hearing. So um, we'll get it fixed eventually. Um, and it's just a matter of like getting the judge like this fucking judge McCollum. He's such a cunt. Like pa how Pomerol was so much better, so much better. Like he the, he was great. He was fair. Like I have nothing but bad experiences in that court prior to this time because of McCollum. Like he revoked the bail in the first place, even though I have no history of violence whatsoever. Fucking ridiculous. He, uh, you know, he granted the order after this individual admitted that they pretended to be pregnant, like and lied about that for several months. Uh, and he also uh, put an unconstitutional thing in there about court records that I can't publish public court documents that we got that anybody could get off of mass courts. Right. And I haven't published them yet. Uh, so I, I mean, I can't show what other people do, but I d certainly never published anything and I abide by court orders, even if they are unconstitutional. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, so what were we talking about? Okay. So let's bring up, uh, let's go watch the hearing. So, cause I haven't, I have some thoughts on this and I wanted to share them with you all. So let's bring it up.
with regard to this motion, Your Honor, uh, Brian Albert was served with a subpoena to testify before a federal grand jury, and he begins reaching out for Brian Higgins. Brian Higgins testified to the federal grand jury that he stopped taking Brian Albert's calls. He stopped replying to Brian Albert's text messages. It's fair to say that led to a panic in the Albert family. We learned that Brian Albert contacted his brother, Canton Police Officer Kevin Albert, to intervene. I'm actually going to stop you there for one second. Mr. Lally, is Kevin Albert a Commonwealth witness? No, Your Honor. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, now, Thanks. Bear in mind, Your Honor, the that, that the Canton police were supposedly conflicted out of this case at that point. So I want to know where that is in the record before me, because I think you know, as Massachusetts counsel, that the state police have jurisdiction over homicides, correct? Oh, they do, yes. So where is it in the record that they were conflicted out? Th those are in reports that uh, the prosecution provided to us. Mr. Lally also told Does she me not know the answer to these questions. Like I know the answer to these questions. They're in the goddamn reports. We've seen them all in the court documents that they were conflicted out specifically because of Kevin Albert, because Brian Albert's brother is on the Canton Police Department. That was the reason that they gave. Not that the state police automatically took up. They said that because because of Kevin Albert's familial, you know, relationship with Brian Albert, they had they were conflicted out of the case. She doesn't know anything. Like the part about Higgins later on that she doesn't know Higgins is a witness. She doesn't know if Kevin Albert's a witness. It's like, did, did, is she playing stupid or does she really just not know? Like, I, I can't tell. I can't tell. But right away, I like how this started off with the bombs about, you know, Kevin, like, why aren't you talking about Higgins? Remember J Jill Daniels in August is like, why don't you talk about Higgins? Why don't you ask about Higgins? And I, and I knew it then they don't trust this motherfucker. And, and we're going to see that uh, there's a reason why. Need that uh, orally early on. In okay, case. so I need those reports. I need that reference. Okay, we're happy to provide that. To okay, you. so I'd like it by tomorrow morning. That's fine, Your Honor. Okay. So the Canton police had a conflict precisely because Kevin Albert is an officer in their department. So how can they conduct an investigation which includes the brother of one of their officers? It stands to reason they can't. They appeared to recognize that. Yet Chief Berkowitz is talking to witnesses in this case, and Kevin Albert himself inserted mm. himself into this case. Brian Albert testified to the federal grand jury about the fact that after Brian Albert received a federal grand jury subpoena, Kevin Albert contacted Brian Higgins. Kevin Albert said to Higgins, and I quote, look, you went off the grid and Brian doesn't understand. You haven't called him. You haven't checked in on him since these subpoenas go out. Everyone got a subpoena, but you. First of all, that's not true that everyone got a subpoena, but you, because according to Higgins lawyer later on, he got a subpoena in April. So they're saying, I don't, we don't know what date this occurred on. He doesn't say when Kevin Albert asks Brian Higgins about this, but that's interesting. He goes, look, we're all like, what, what is the exact language? He's quoting a text here. He's quoting a text. So let's hear this exact quote. This is really interesting. Kevin Albert said to Higgins, and I quote, look, you went off the grid and Brian doesn't understand. You haven't called him. You haven't checked in on him since these subpoenas go out. Everyone got a subpoena, but you. We don't understand. Brian doesn't understand. You ghosting him. He's nervous as fuck. So this is after Brian Albert got his subpoena. And he's like, what is going on? He's like reaching out to Brian Higgins. Brian Higgins isn't answering him. So Kevin Albert now inserts himself into the story. Now Kevin Albert's part of the story. Why is he reaching out to him? How is this not witness intimidation? Like as he's going to bring up later, thank God. It's like, it's okay when they reach out to witnesses, but not when I do. Like, and I'm not even part of the case. Like Brian Albert's part of this case. And he's reach. he's like, if Higgins don't want to talk to you, it's like you're reaching out to him. Like, what's going on? You still on our team or not? You still going to say the right thing? It's it's wild. It's wild. So play some more. Those were Kevin Albert's words to Brian Higgins. And, Your Honor, there's only one way to interpret that. Brian Albert was panicked that Kevin, um, that, sorry, that Brian Higgins had flipped on him. 
Brian Albert enlists his Canton police officer brother to contact Higgins to try and find out if that was the case. And it wasn't just text messages between them. After first testifying that he didn't want to talk to Kevin Albert about the investigation, Brian Higgins later admitted that before he testified before the federal grand jury on June 1st of 2023, Higgins and Kevin uh, Albert uh, talked on the phone for a good on. 15 Rewind minutes. That. Well, I want to hear exactly that was huh? Brian Higgins later admitted that before he testified okay. before the federal grand jury on June 1st of 20. So Brian Higgins testified in front of the federal grand jury on June 1st. And before he goes in on June, think of what had happened by June 1st. Like this was, I was knee deep in this fucking story by, by June 1st. And we had blown the story up. It was all over the news. I had said that there was a federal grand jury that had been convened. It turned out to be 100% true. They're bringing in Higgins. They don't like, he's one of the first people that they bring in here. We know that Colin didn't go in front of the grand jury until I believe July. We don't know when Jennifer McCabe went in there, but it's June 1st might be, you know, one of the first times when uh, he might have been the first one that they brought in there. We don't know. We don't know, which means he's the whistleblower, which means he's trying to save his ass. It explains why he's not returning. Brian Albert's phone calls because he's saving his own ass. 2023, Higgins and Kevin Albert talked on the phone for a good 15 minutes. Okay. That was two days before he testified before the federal grand jury. Before he testifies Higgins, to the feds, Higgins Brian with Higgins Albert? is conferring with Kevin Albert, Kevin Albert, who supposedly conflicted out of the case. So, you know, my goodness, with, with all the allegations of witnesses, it's like, so he's talking, uh, he, they talk for 15 minutes. What's wild about this to me is they got their phones. That's what makes me so confident about this. This is just more proof that they have all of their phones. We don't know if this is Brian Higgins. This comes from Brian Higgins phone or if this comes from Kevin Albert's phone, but we know that they have Michael Proctor's phone because they got all his text messages, right? We know that they have uh, Brian Higgins phone. They probably have Brian Albert's phone. They got Jennifer McCabe's phone. They got all their phones. They probably have Karen Reed's phone. They got all of their phones because they, they're not, they're the FBI. They can get whatever the fuck they want to get. Of course they have their phones. And, and I've said, I called this from day one. I called this a few weeks ago when I did the Caitlin Albert story. And I told you people that Caitlin Albert initially said her parents said that she had left at 1215 before John O'Keefe arrived. She later told police after testifying in front of the grand jury, actually, I left at 145. So 90 minutes later, which puts her inside the house when John O'Keefe was there, which makes her much more part of the story. Now she's a witness to this before she had nothing to say because she wasn't there. Why would she put herself in the house? And the only thing that made sense to me, right, is the phone puts her inside the house. They got her phone and they probably have geofence. And they know who is inside that house. They know everyone. And, and that includes John O'Keefe, who is also inside that house. So this is uh, that I find this fascinating that they have all of their cell phones and think because the defense has been trying so hard to get their phones to no avail. Like, like the Commonwealth put up all of these roadblocks and the feds just got them all. And they know everything they were doing and everyone they were calling. Why is Kevin Albert conferring, coaching Brian Higgins for 15 minutes before he goes in front of the federal grand jury. And he lies, by the way, he lies to the federal, he fucking ATF agent lies to the grand jury. Oh, Jill Daniels tells me, why aren't you talking about Higgins? Yeah, I am talking about it now. Motherfucker lied to the grand jury. He's probably also lying about Karen Reed too. Let's be honest about like, she wanted to fuck him. Give me a break, dude. Give me a break. A little bit out of your league, Higgins. Chill out there. Chill out there intimidation thrown around by this DA's office mm -hmm. and special prosecutors they Hello. appoint. Yeah. Why has Kevin Albert never been investigated for witness intimidation? And for that matter, why has Brian Albert never been investigated? But as you ponder those questions, please realize, Your Honor, we're not asking for much here. We're only asking for relevant phone records. We're asking for contact between Kevin Albert and Higgins and Brian Albert. We're asking for uh, contact uh, that violates the recusal, the self-recusal of the Scranton Police Department from this investigation. Contact which impeaches them, contact which is relevant to their motives in this case, it impeaches the investigation. 
we are entitled to explore whether this investigation was conducted correctly mm -hmm. and ethically. And we're entitled to explore whether improper influence was put upon witnesses by the Alberts. Without this testimony, this federal testimony from Higgins, and without the federal investigation, we never would have known of Kevin Albert's involvement here. But now we do. And the Commonwealth does. Why aren't they curious about what was said and why? They've announced an objection to this motion. Why are they fighting our quest to get exculpatory evidence? We need this evidence, the, these phone records, in admissible form. That's why we're filing this Rule 17 motion. We have more than met the requirements of Lampron. The records are relevant because they tend to show a cover-up. They are relevant because they show a Canton police officer inserting himself into a case in which his department was conflicted out precisely because he was an officer there. I mean, yeah, like why, how inappropriate was it for Kevin Al? Can't they get Fredo to do it? Like, that's one thing I was thinking about this. They're like, okay, Brian Albert can't reach Brian Higgins. And that's a problem because he's like, what are you going to say? What are you going to tell you? You going to snitch on us? And he, okay, so he needs a conduit to reach out to Brian Higgins. They got like, he's got like five brothers. Like, there's like a whole shitload of them. Like, we don't, we know Chris. We know, obviously, we know Chicken Pop Charlie. We know uh, Fredo, obviously. And we know Kevin. But there's like, Two or three other ones. The one the, the the ones that look like aliens. Like the, where are those ones? Keith, is that his name? Is there a Keith? I don't even know. They don't they they're they're mysterious. We never hear from them. Why didn't he just get one of them to do it? Why does he why do you get the Canton cop to do it? If any if if any other Albert brother had reached out to Higgins, it would be less controversial because it's like not a Canton cop. That's what makes this obviously controversial is that it's not a Canton cop or that it is a Canton cop. Like that's what, and they're conflicted out of the case, obviously as a result of that. So that, I don't know why they didn't do that. Why didn't they just pick the other retired Albert brothers that no one's heard of before? I thought that was odd. They're relevant because they impeach the credibility of Commonwealth witnesses who deny that they are a part of a conspiracy. Yet the phone records tend to show they were conspiring together. We cannot get these records any other way. We cannot effectively prepare for trial without these witnesses. So these you records. testified as to their relevancy. How are they evidentiary? Uh, they're evidentiary because they are both relevant and material. And if they're provided by the providers with an appropriate uh, affidavit from a keeper of records, they're admissible. <laughs> the Commonwealth could have gotten these records at any okay, point, Bev. but they chose not Boom, to. Boom, roasted. And they have fought our efforts to get all phone records. Thank goodness another law enforcement agency stepped in <laughs> and did the job yeah. that the DA's office should have done but did not. Mm -hmm. We need these records. Going to trial without them would violate my client's rights to exculpatory evidence. It would violate her due process rights. And finally, to the extent that this court previously ruled that our requests for phone records were a fishing expedition, nobody can claim that anymore with a straight face. Nope. We now have testimony that these records exist. Exactly. The calls exist. The yep. text messages exist. As Mr. Lally said in the last hearing. And, and this is, uh, that's a good point, right? Before they said, well, you don't know what's in their phones. So you're, it's a fishing expedition. It's like, bitch, the FBI is literally telling us what's in their phones. So we would like access to those phones as well. And Auntie Bev allows all four of these motions to get their phones. All of them go through. And it just seems like Auntie Bev, that was interesting. It's like she's acquiescing to the, like, like if the, she might dismiss it. I mean, I was on with Sean and we debated this. He thinks that Bev is going to dismiss it. Now that would be unprecedented for a judge to dismiss a murder indictment. Like it takes a judge, like auntie Bev is not a transcendental figure that it, it seemed like she's the kind of person to do something like that. Plus I think she wants to be on TV. Like she always has the, the hair done before she's been doing that a lot. I think she enjoys being famous. Like she wants to be on this case. And if this case goes to trial, I mean, she's going to be like Lance Ito or whatever. Is that the, OJ judge, like she's going to be somewhat famous from this. So I think she, it's in her benefit for this to go to trial career wise, you know, for auntie Bev, 
Like she'll be famous. But at the same time, it's like, it just seems like she's the fact that she's allowing all this. It's like, well, it's, she can just say, well, it's not me. It's like the feds. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Look at all this shit. We can't go to trial. Like, how can they go to trial? Like how does Morrissey really want this to go to trial? They're going to get humiliated. They're going to like putting Jen McCabe on the stand to get cross-examined by Alan Jackson, putting Michael Proctor on the stand. It's going to be a disaster. They canceled the evidentiary hearing in May because they don't want to put these people on the goddamn stand. So what are they going to do? What are they going to do? I don't know. Phones do not lie. These phone records do not lie. Ooh, using his words against We need them and we ask the court to order them. All right. It, it looks like you're asking the parties themselves to bring these in, though. Uh, to the extent that they have them, that's accurate, Your Honor. We're also asking for their phone providers to uh, yeah. so provide I, I, them as they're, well. So they're two separately filed motions, okay. right? And yes. One can, one of them is with Mr. Berkowitz or former Chief Berkowitz, but he's not on the other. So I saw them as two distinct motions. And one, the one that we just heard you on, is really asking them to deliver whatever records, right? Co correct, correct. Um, and the I would note that the providers are on the second motion, uh, except but for- that's three different people or one different person on this. One motion. different person. So we have Higgins and we have Brian Albert on the first motion. Uh, we have Higgins uh, and we have Brian Albert on the second motion. The difference is Berkowitz versus Kevin Albert. Right. Right. Okay. She asked the stupidest All questions. Right. Okay. Um, Ms. Delali, I'll hear from you. And then I do see Mr. Henning here. I don't know if he wants to speak or not, but oh, I'm going to hear Greg from Henning. Mr. Lally now. Oh, what a loser. What the hell is this? I got to get YouTube premium. All right. Now, look at this. Dude, he went heavy on the hair gel today. Look at look at this. Look at that. Know, just uh, very look at briefly with regard to, uh, to this motion. Um, look at that. Look at that hair. With regard to look, the... Dude, how old is this guy? What are we doing with the LA looks? Look at that hair. It's just like, what are you... What is going on with this guy with the hair gel? How much time... Look at, look at all that. That's a lot of hair gel. I do not want to see what his pillow looks like in the morning. Cause that all, if I haven't worn hair gel in years, you know, cause I'm a grown ass man. It's like these grown ass men, like that's a lot of hair gel, Lally. Chill out. Like, I don't know. You got to do something different. I don't know. It's just, a, he looks like a character out of the hunger games or something. How is this guy real in the suit too? <laughs> it's like, Oh my God. Uh, so he's back. To, we're going to hear some Lally explaining here. It's not hair gel. What is it? Whatever it is, it's a freaking lot. It's too much. He's got to take it easy. Rule 17 motion with request to records uh, or communications from Look individual cell phones from April 1st of 2023 to the present day. Um, <clears throat> firstly, the Commonwealth would just <clears throat> indicate um, the facts are recited in, yeah. in the Risk. defendant's motion uh, the Commonwealth would submit are, are largely uh, inaccurate. Um, it's can, injected with hyperbole, injected with conjecture. Yeah, right, um, right, right, right. As for to, in regard to federal grand jury materials, uh, which belie much of what, what counsel claims uh, that they say, essentially unsubstantiated uh, conjecture, uh, which is uh, directly contradicted by the testimony and the evidence contained within the federal materials. Now, I know that the court has had uh, those materials and uh, has carefully reviewed those materials, so I, I don't feel the need to go into each and every uh, specific uh, ground. However, what I would say, secondly, even assuming that everything contained within counsel's motion uh, was true and accurate, uh, the defendant's motion in this uh, specific instance fails on two grounds. Number one, uh, what the Commonwealth would submit is that the time period that's being requested is far too overbroad uh, for whatever uh, collusion or whatever uh, purportedly uh, occurred according to counsel uh, going from what? almost a year uh, worth of communications from people who admittedly through uh, the testimony and through the evidence uh, that was presented and has been presented in both forms uh, knew each other okay. well and knew each other well before any of this uh, occurred and, and uh, continue to to associate and be friends uh, following this incident oh secondly oh so uh, he's opposing it because it's normal that they talk it's normal that kevin albert 
texted Brian Higgins about, yo, what's up with, what's up with the grand jury shit? You're freaking everyone out. That's a normal thing. <laughs> it's like, what? That they're friends beforehand. And by the way, like Michael Proctor was friends with them too. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So the all, so all these people were friends. Okay. Gotcha. And that's the reason we shouldn't get their phone records is because they were friends beforehand. Yeah. But then a body showed up on the lawn and they started texting. And now the FBI has found out they're texting each other really weird shit. And this is your excuse is that they knew each other beforehand. That's the best this lally a motherfucker can come up with. Just compare the passion in, in the way that lally talks compared to Yanetti and Jackson. It's like Yanetti and Jackson believe what they're saying. They're passionate about it. This motherfucker has got no passion. He doesn't, he's just going through the motions. He does not care. He's just like, I'm just reading the script. I don't actually get, believe any of this shit. I'm just saying it to say it because that's what they, that's what they put on the paper in front of me. He doesn't believe any of this stuff. He's got no flair. He's got, nobody would hire Adam Lally in the private sector. You would not want to put your life in the hands of this dolt, Like, come on. He's defeated. In the sort of last paragraph of, of counsel's motion claims that the records are needed uh, to establish the exact nature and extent. What the Commonwealth would submit is really what they are needed for, uh, from counsel's perspective is to establish the existence of these conversations and what the content of them were, which is the very epitome of a fishing expedition. All oh, right. Uh, and so for those two reasons, the Commonwealth uh, would submit that uh, the defendant has not met the standard on the Lampron and that motion should be denied. I mean, look, at he just can't wait to leave. <laughs> he's just like, he's just reading it. He just can't. He's like, I don't know. Whatever. I'm just reading the fucking paper. <laughs> it's like I got nothing. I, yeah, you're on. Just, just, just dismiss it. Blah 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 blah. He can't wait. There's no like, you're on. This is outrageous that they want to see these phones. This defendant is just making things up and and throwing baseless accusations. Instead, he just got something. He's like, there's no reason to look at the phones. There's just no reason. It's just baseless. It's a fishing expedition, just like the rest of them. And so, for that reason, the Commonwealth is 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 requesting that 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 you deny this motion. Thank you. He he couldn't wait to take his yellow pad and get the fuck out of there. He could not wait. He could not wait. He's just like this is a losing battle. I'm getting paid my eighty five grand. He pro his salary is a yearly salary is probably like what Ken Mello is getting just in one paycheck to do me. Come on. All right, so I just, I see Mr. Henning, so I don't know, do you want to be heard? Yeah, please come forward. And I don't know who counsel is for Mr. Higgins, but if he or she's here, do you want to be heard as well, sir? Uh, great, so I'll hear you after I hear from Mr. Henning. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. On behalf of Brian this, Albert, uh, I just wanted to put three things on the record. This rotund motherfucker, this guy. I've never seen someone as vanilla as this guy. So Greg Henning was, is the analyst for WCVB, the legal analyst, which is why their station never mentions the name Brian Albert. He also ran for district attorney of Suffolk County and was supposed to win. Like he had the backing of the previous district attorney. He was the establishment guy that was like gonna win and it was his turn. And then he got, he lost to fucking Rachel Rollins. That's how much of a loser this guy is. But I've never this his he's just too round. I don't like how round he is when he walks. He looks he's shaped like Grimace. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. I don't this something about this guy that just offends me. All right, here we go. Court. The first is, and I'm sure the court is aware, that the parties that are the subject of the Rule 17 motion have not actually received the motions. We got the cover page, we got the orders and the proposed orders, but we have not been able to review the actual memoranda because at least according to the interpretation of the protective order, oh my God. we're not entitled to see that content. Um, and that All right. Um, I ruled that they were to be given because what? the federal proceeding is not to interfere with this court's proceedings I, I understand that your honor and, and i did receive the court's order and i informed uh each of the respective counsel that i spoke to as far as what the court's order was um and i also understand that the court hasn't had um the um opportunity to review the federal protective order um but my interpretation of that order uh simply would not permit dissemination of of the material contained within the memorandum. Even though I do double speed. The Lampron protocol says shall. 
doesn't that supersede a federal protective order? It's the law of the SJC. How can third party record holders, the people who rule 17 in the case law protects, not be able to go forward without it? And I understand there's a, there's a direct contradiction there. And so I uh, <laughs> wanted to caution. OK, no, I, I understand you're following your order. I'm going to make it available. I'm going to oh. not a party to any protective order. Oh. Um, so uh, we can take a recess. You can have them now. Um, what do you what do you all want to do? I mean, the, I didn't know that the Commonwealth was not complying with my order. Ooh. I understand why you didn't, but I didn't know that. My apologies. Um, my apologies. I'm happy to be heard now. And See all her hair? Look at her hair. She just got her hair done. Like, she can't wait to be on TV. Look at her. You know she wants to be on TV. But she's doing this whole, like, thing that, like, oh, now I got to be fair. Now I got to come down. I got to spank Adam Lally a little bit. Give him a little public undressing on here. She's always happier when Alan Jackson isn't in the room. <laughs> she always is. But uh, she's doing, this is just for show. Like, I mean, th she could have held these people responsible. They never got any discovery and she never held their feet to the flame. She still hasn't responded on several motions. And now she's just like, come on, Adam. I'm, suddenly she's Mrs. Like strict teacher. All of a sudden, give me a break. If the court will allow us to review that the motion and the memoranda, we can amend with a written filing if there's something we need. Yes, pursuant to a protective order, the way we have them in the Massachusetts courts for Lynn Prongewire records. Okay. So, can I have one moment, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, look, see what I mean? Look at this rotund motherfucker. Look at this guy. Look at him. He's just so, like, why, why does he walk like that? Look at him. Look at him. He's so round. Like, what the fuck? He's shaped like Grimace. I don't know. Your Honor, what I think the counsel for the third parties would ask is that we are able to address the court today, but allow us an opportunity to review the memoranda and submit something in writing before the court makes an order. Sure. Um, no, she is right about that. I agree. How can they? I'm just rereading the appendix on Dwyer, and it is a shell. So um, my view is that the SJC in Commonwealth versus Dwyer, the procedure that we're to follow, um, allows certainly, and I say mandates, that the third-party record holders be given this information. So um, I, we will provide it when we take a recess today. I'll ask Mr. Clerk to make copies of what I have, not what the lawyers have. Um, we need protective orders signed before you're given them. And I will have them given to all three record holders or four if there's somebody here from Mr. Berkowitz. All right, I'll hear you. There we go. Uh, the first part of what I wanted to address is dovetails with what Your Honor is just addressing. Um, the fact that we are third parties in this matter and do not have access to the materials that are in the, the subject of the discussion um, from the federal side of things makes us at a disadvantage here in front of the court. Obviously, we're going to remedy that hopefully by being able to review it. But that notwithstanding, the fact that there is materials that we can't review that are being discussed in front of the court, even if we are able to see the memoranda, makes it difficult to address these. And I think for an issue of fairness, I want to make sure that the record's clear. If there are future motions, I want to preserve and not waive any argument as to the fairness of being able to access those records. So that would be the first point. The second point is going into this, not having an opportunity to review the record, I do believe that the Rule 17 standard of relevance still needs to be met regardless of whether we get to see the material or not. So what I do want to offer to the court to consider as part of your determination here is that after receiving the notice from the Commonwealth last week, I contacted the U.S. Attorney's Office and I spoke Ooh. to the lead prosecutor in the case. Okay. Okay. What I want to have the court know is that Ooh. I have permission to notify the court that Brian Albert, his wife Nicole, his son Brian Jr., and Caitlin are not targets of the federal investigation. And I've been given okay. So this was like, oh, got him. They're like, got him. He's not the target of the. We never said they were ever. Like, go back and listen to the tapes. The targets I've always maintained have been. The FBI, uh, I apologize, have been the state police and, and the district attorney's office. They're not here to solve the murder of who killed John O'Keefe. They know who killed John O'Keefe. They're here to find out which government entity is corrupt, who covered this up. That's what they're here to do, is build a case against the people who did this, who covered this up. Not who They know who murdered John O'Keefe. They know he was inside the house. They, they figured that out a long time ago. They're not stupid. Everybody knows John O'Keefe was inside that house and he was murdered inside that house. It's just a fact. And all you see, what the only thing you hear, the only type of people that say that John O'Keefe was killed by Karen Reed are people who were either ill-informed, like a lot of the people on court TV, they just haven't looked into this at all. They don't know nothing about the case. They prepped for five minutes and they're predisposed to believe that defendants are inherently guilty. That's what a lot of people believe, right? Defend, you got charged and they, you must be guilty, right? Or people who are just mad at me. That that's it. That that's about it. Like every single person on Twitter or wherever that's like spends all day talking about Karen Reed's guilty. They're all mad at me. Every single one at that 
remember the 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 chain smoking fupa sloth uh grifter twisted tragedies i think elisa was her name was that her name she <laughs> she now believes karen reed is guilty right because she's mad at me that's all that's all it comes down to every sing it's a fucking and they're always no i think he's guilty because i researched in the facts no you haven't Nothing has come out. Literally nothing. As this case goes on, there's more and more evidence that fucking Karen Reed's innocent. No, but no, you're just, they, they, they don't know how to handle it. They're stupid. They all like, what are the odds that like all these people who for years, cause there's been before Karen Reed was around, there was a number of people who were a little bit obsessed with me. There's a, a gentleman by the name of Michael Gaffney on Twitter. You might've seen him before. Uh, he sued me and lost miserably in court. He finished last place in a city election for Worcester City Council before moving to Florida and turning into a fucking weirdo, like the biggest weirdo you've ever seen. He's been obsessed with me for years. Coincidentally, he believes Karen Reed is guilty. Krusty Panties, whose life is dedicated to trolling me, but can't anymore because she got that order on her and the witness intimidation charge. Uh, so she is also obsessed with me and believes Karen Reed is guilty right and every single one of her people in her posse they all believe it because of me it's just like it's just so fucking obvious we've been over this a million times before but nobody actually nobody who actually looks at the facts can possibly come to any other conclusion and i'm just gonna keep saying it, it is what it is like yeah kim fair like that chick has been obsessed with me for years for years because i wrote about her like three years ago and she can't Get over it. She can't cope. And this is how she spends her days. This is how she spends her days. Every single person does that. So again, when it all comes down, it's like, and good. I, I'm glad they're saying that because they can never show their faces again when this is done because they supported cop killers. That's what they did. They supported cop killers permission to disclose that in open court. Okay. So I think it's important for the court to know that as you go into the motion that you're considering and the arguments from the defense. The third thing I would like to just ask the court is, notwithstanding everything that's just been said and reserving the right to file that written uh, document later on, Brian Albert does not object to turning over the materials that are being requested. I understand that the Commonwealth may be having objections as to the Commonwealth's case, but Brian Albert does not have anything to hide. He does not have anything that he needs to, uh, to prevent the court from seeing this material. What? And if the court does deem, after reviewing the material and having access to the federal records, that these are somehow relevant, but that these are somehow admissible, and the court deems that Rule 17 has been satisfied, Brian Albert will comply with the court order. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Kevin Albert, uh, President is Peter Pasciuco, and on behalf of Brian Higgins is William Conley. Great. Thank you. All right, so this is Higgins' attorney. Uh, let me just read a couple donos real quick uh, that have come in here because I don't want to miss anyone. So a couple turtle chats. Mr. B sends $5 and says, Sean lost cred when he had on Fruit Loop and Toucan. You know, I'm good with Sean. You know, I don't like – and by the way, when I was on there um, – so Sean said, uh, said that Nick told him that he hired Tim Bradel or they had some sort of fee agreement or something like that. I contacted Tim. He said, uh, he said Nick Fiorillo calls him all the time and keeps trying to hire him. They has not hired him. Like he, but he says he never comes up with money. <laughs> it's like, so there we go. There we go. He's done. He so Nick lied. Nick lied about that. So there's that. Okay. Um, next up. And again, it's like, why is he calling my attorney? It's like these people, they see my, what I don't like about people like that is that they see my story and they see what I'm dealing with. And then they just want to, and Karen Reed, and they just want to latch onto it and make it about them. Like that guy, Eldon, the only thing that motherfucker ever talks about is himself. That's what I couldn't stand about him. It's like, dude, can you stop talking about yourself for five seconds? Yeah, we get it. You got screwed over. You have some fucking whole story. Can you stop talking about yourself for five fucking seconds? Like, is Can you stop? Can you talk about Karen Reed? Because all you ever fucking talking about, Eldon, is you and how boo fucking who. 12 years ago, you got fucked over by the system and you went to jail for six months. And then you haven't, you can't get a job since then. Listen to my story, blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, stop talking about your fucking self. Okay. No one gives a fuck. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on that. All right, next up. Um, Scott sends 10 bucks and says, are you a certified butt dial during colitis experiment reconstructionist? <laughs> 
your testimony may not be allowed if not in courts of law. We'll see. I'm, I'm not actually licensed, but uh, I probably know more about dead bodies than I were any scorty bellow. All right. Kim sends $20 and says, new home means new beginnings. I wish you nothing but positivity from here on out. P.S. You will always be unk to me. Old school Toro writer right there. Thank you very much, Kim. Uh, Thomas sends 10 bucks and said, this award-winning journalism, are we going to see The Intimidator? Uh, I hope not. I hope, oh, you mean tonight? I mean, I can't. We're going to get, I'll be banned from YouTube. You've probably seen it. Anyway. Everybody's seen it anyway. It's like 80th percentile probably. It's up there. Um, again, you know, uh, I hope, let's hope, I, I don't know. I just have a bad feeling about they got something up their sleeves, but uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, next up. Uh, and sends 25 bucks and it says, stop it. That's my raggedy and all use the Chucky doll, please. Okay. We'll see. I'm going to defile this thing. Thank you. Charlene sends 25 bucks and says, great show with Sean tonight. Glad you cleared the air as you both together uh, are fire as well as you with Will and Brian. Let's bring Melanie little on the court day panel. I would love to do that. Lally looks like Cameron Diaz and something about Mary with his jelly. A bunch of people are saying that it really does. Um, another turtle chat from Dave. Jen McCabe is just scary looking at first. She was just sort of a Clydesdale with Eagle talent feet, but now the best Hollywood makeup artist couldn't make someone look as scary as she does. I was hoping to run into her at a place in Canton. My friend works at, but she's just too creepy to look at these days. She sucks. Krusty sucks. The McAlberts suck. You rule. Keep up the good work. Happy Sunday. Thank you very much, Dave. I agree with everything you just said. Also got a couple turtle chats here. Uh, I mean, uh, cash apps to read here. Uh, first up, we have uh, Alan Mermaid again. Alien Mermaid since five dollars says Reddington is a snake. No him plays games. Okay, thank you very much, Alien. Uh, Jim Ferris Bueller sends five bucks and says you and Sean should record each other French kissing. No, thank you, Jim Ferris Bueller. Thank you. Uh, Christina sends fifty dollars and says Plan B for the doll. <laughs> Plan is the doll going to say she's pregnant after this? And, and 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 pretend to have an abortion. That's my question. Is this doll <laughs> going to tell me that I got her pregnant, even though I pulled out every time? Is 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 this doll going to tell me that she's pregnant? <laughs> and then, like, say that I hit her. Oh, he hit me. He hit me. Ah, oh, I fell on the couch. I fell on the couch. I got beat up by the intimidator. Oh, he's intimidating me. Oh, give me a break. Okay. Um, Sharon sends 25 bucks and says, keep giving us the truth, turtle boy. Will do. Will do. Thank you very much. Um, Mora sends five bucks and says, Eric Neal, cat diddler. Oh, yeah, that guy. Eric Neal. I forgot about that motherfucker. Uh, I think he's the guy. Isn't his dad who his dad's in jail for pedophilia, right? That's the guy. And he wrote that. I think Eric Neal is the guy that wrote that blog. That was like sympathetic to his dad who went to jail for being a pedophile, if I recall. So he supports pedophiles. Not a good look for Mr. Eric Neal um, from somewhere, I think Middleton or the North Shore, somewhere up there. But okay, if anyone else would like to donate, you can uh, click at the link at the top for Turtle Chat or you can cash at me at dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. You get to write a message. I'll read your message out loud to the class. Shout out to everyone out there. We got 3,600 people on YouTube. Give us a like, a thumbs up, and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Shout out to the 126 Rumble Rats over there. I see all you people. Time traveling hipster. Uh, and yeah, also shout out on Twitter. We got a whole bunch of people in the Twitter world. I'll never call it X. 4,367 people currently watching on Twitter, bringing us to 8,053 live viewers. Oh, there is a live turtle chat on Twitter. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's go back to uh, the hearing, shall we? So now it's going to be Connolly. This is Higgins' attorney. Let's go. All right. So, counsel, I need you to spell your name for me, please. Yes, Your Honor. The last name is Connolly, C O N N O L L Y. And what's your first name? William. Thank you. All right. I will hear you on behalf of Mr. Higgins. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor, as the court is aware, Brian Higgins' phone records and communications are at issue in these motions. Um, Brian Higgins is a federal ATF agent. He is a witness in the Commonwealth's prosecution of this case, and he has cooperated fully in the Commonwealth's investigation. As this court knows, we've not had the benefit of seeing the factual support for these motions. 
but I want to provide some information that likely isn't contained within those materials submitted to the court, um, but of which I have a good faith basis to believe is information contained in the materials provided by the federal government to the parties in this case. I've represented Brian Higgins since April of 2023, the month when he received the federal grand jury subpoena. Like he has in this case, Brian has cooperated fully with the federal investigation. He has answered every question put to him in both investigations, and he will continue to do so because he has nothing to hide. Brian Higgins is not a target of the federal investigation. That has been confirmed by the United States Attorney's Office and confirmed to me that I could make that representation in court. The US yeah, he's not a target of the federal investigation because he's the snitch. <laughs> it's like, of course he's not the target. He's the informant. He's the guy saving himself. Duh. So obviously he's not the primary target of this. Duh. The U.S. Attorney's Office has continuously confirmed throughout its investigation that Brian Higgins is not a target of their investigation. Brian Higgins has not participated in any kind of a cover-up or conspiracy to cover up the criminal activity of others. Brian has spent his career saving lives. He was a firefighter before becoming an ATF agent. Okay. He's been an EMT since 1992. He received a Congressional Medal for saving the life of a fellow ATF task force officer um, after being shot five times in Somerville, Massachusetts. He has served our military in Iraq. Participating in a cover-up is contrary to who he is as a human being and a professional. I am here to represent Brian's interest in privacy. It's really not, though. I mean, just because I, I don't doubt that Brian Higgins has done fine work prior to January 29th, 2022. It's clearly not contrary to who he is as a person because he did, in fact, participate in a cover-up because John O'Keefe was inside the house and so was Brian Higgins. And Brian Higgins knew John prior to this. There's a picture of them together. And according to Brian, he was trying to pork, uh, you know, John's girl. Or, you know, that according to him. So he's the, really talk about motive. Uh, but no, like Brian Higgins is one of the people who Scanlon told David Yanetti was there. He said the ATF agent. He didn't say Higgins by name, but he said the ATF agent. He was definitely involved in the cover up. There's no doubt about it. Just because you had all this fine record beforehand doesn't mean you can't do something bad. Now, that's not saying he's the one that did it. That's not saying he's the one that did it, but, uh, you know, he's there and the Brian out, like who knows what Brian Albert said? It's like, dude, we're all going down. We're, if we don't put this motherfucker on the front lawn, we're all, look, he's going to die. So let's just put him on the front lawn. That's it. We're going to need some help. Go. Brian Higgins at my urging, um, will not capitulate and stand down when efforts are made to further intrude upon his privacy based upon sheer speculation. It is for that reason that we oppose these motions, not because Brian Higgins has done something wrong or has anything to hide. We know this court will give us an opportunity to review the motions and supplement our remarks if we, if we deem it necessary. We know this court will fairly weigh the arguments before it and will render a fair decision, and we will respect that decision, and we will comply with that decision. Respectfully, we do not believe there is a sufficient factual basis to support the relief requested in the motions before the court. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you very much. I mean, that's the whole thing. He lied to the federal grand jury, as we're going to see. Of course, he's calling Brian Albert at 2.22 in the morning. Oh, or did maybe butt dial. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We haven't got to the butt dial yet. Counsel. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Your Honor. Attorney Peter Pashuko on behalf of Kevin Albert. All right, so you need to spell that last name. Or it's P-A-S-C-I-U-C-C-O. Good afternoon. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a little bit of background uh, with respect to Mr. Uh, Mr. Albert, and we are objecting to this uh, this Rule 17 motion. Um, Kevin Albert's a 19 and a half year veteran of the Canton Police Department, extremely well respected, extremely well liked. Any insinuation that he participated in a conspiracy or a cover up is simply untrue. Um, there's been no showing how personal communications uh, between my client and Mr. Higgins have any relevance here, let alone, let alone evidentiary value. Um, Kevin Albert is not a Commonwealth witness. He did not testify in the federal grand jury, and his uh, involvement is essentially zero. His involvement is zero. He called Higgins two days before he testified in front of the federal grand jury. He acted as a conduit for his brother, Brian Albert, who reached out to Higgins and said, on Brian's behalf, Brian's worried about you. Why aren't you returning his calls? What's going on? How come, how come everyone else got a subpoena but you? But lo and behold, what they didn't know is he got a subpoena as well. And that's why he stopped talking to these motherfuckers because he's like, oh, shit. These assholes are going to, he, he figured it out. They're going to turn on me. So I'm going to just, I'm going to take care of Higgins. Like that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look out for number one. Give me a break. Give me a break. Kevin. I notice. I believe he does not say the other two are like, make sure to say my client is not the target of a federal investigation. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say this because I'm not convinced that the Kent police department isn't 
part of this federal investigation. And they're like that Kevin Albert would certainly be somebody that they would look into. Absolutely. Um, this is a clear intrusion, as Attorney Connolly indicated, into the privacy rights uh, of these individuals. And I've advised Kevin that there is simply no reason to acquiesce to something that's just clearly a fishing expedition. Um, so upon my advice, Kevin Albert is objecting to this Rule 17 motion, but uh, we will honor and respect the court's decision and appreciate the time to that's supplement any, any response in writing um, after we, we see the motion and affidavit, which hasn't been provided to us yet. Okay, thank you. He didn't put up much of a fight. He's just like, yeah, we oppose it because, uh, you know, it's he's been on the force for 19 and a half years and it's just privacy. You know, he, he he's not like really doesn't have a lot of passion about this. Like my client is a hundred percent in it. He's just like, Nope, we're just privacy rights. Uh, he doesn't say anything about my guy's not the target of a federal investigation. He doesn't say it at all. Much. All right, Mr. Unetti, did you want to respond or no? No, I would just move to the next motion if the court were ready. Okay. So we'll move on to the next motion. Uh, uh, Mr. Lally, you didn't want to add anything, did you? No, thank you. Okay. All right, so this motion concerns Brian Albert, Kevin, Kenneth Berkowitz, Brian Higgins. Yes, and uh, Your Honor, with the court's permission, I'd like to start with uh, Brian Higgins with regard to this motion. All right, so uh, Mr. Lally, is it safe to assume you did not provide, <laughs> or you didn't comply with my order um, in, in providing the motions yeah. and supporting affidavits it's, it's, on this? It's funny. Uh, it's funny, party, isn't it? Record holders and their lawyers. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So the, the she's like, yeah, so you, you didn't do it, did you, Lally? No, you're a fuck up, aren't you? You're a little fuck up. Yeah, but you had time for your hair gel, didn't you? You little fucker. It's okay. It's it's not like this is a murder trial or anything. Just yeah, it's funny. It's funny when you don't hand over uh, discovery during a, a murder trial. It's funny when you don't do what I tell you to do. It's funny. Council will receive copies of this as well and be permitted to argue now and supplement it. All right. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, as I previously mentioned, Brian Higgins did testify before the federal grand jury, and at that time he was specifically asked if, on January 29th of 2022, he made any phone calls when he got home. He said that he did not. So he testified in front of the federal grand jury and asked, did you make any phone calls when you got home? And by the way, he home was not sandwich at the time. Home, I believe, was Braintree. Remember Higgins' timeline? Uh, it was originally reported that he clocked into work at 1.30 at the Cannes Police Department so that he had like an alibi. And then he says that he went home Back, I, be, I believe it was Braintree where we lived. It definitely wasn't Sandwich at the time because that's far. Um, but yeah, so he, he said, so he tells the federal grand jury, what did he say exactly the first time? That he made any phone calls when he got home. He said that he did not. Okay, so he said he did not make any phone calls when he got home. He testified that he lived alone. He testified that he was alone that night. He testified there was nobody else in his bedroom. He testified that when he went to bed, he placed his phone on the bedside table. On the bedside, the phones. Over. After making those admissions, he was confronted by a federal prosecutor with his phone records. Those records revealed that Brian Albert called Brian Higgins at 2.22 in the morning on January 29th. Brian Albert, so they got their phone records now. Brian Albert calls Brian Higgins at 2.22. And what happens? Those records reveal, moreover, that 17 seconds later, Brian Higgins called Brian Albert back. And that okay, so they, so they, so wait, he calls him the first time. Does he not? Let's see, one, one more time. Let me play that again, just so we have all the facts here. Those records revealed that Brian Albert called Brian Higgins at 2.22 in the morning on January 29th. Those records reveal, moreover, that 17 seconds later, Brian Higgins called Brian Albert back. And that so Brian, so the first time they didn't talk. So he calls Higgins, Higgins doesn't answer. But Higgins calls back 17 seconds later. So what are they? I thought he was sleeping. I thought he didn't make any phone calls. So he lied. We know that he lied under oath. He's a federal agent who lied to a federal grand jury. And when you lie to the feds the first time, you're fucked. If you'll recall, Leah Jen so in that story. That I probably, she got caught lying to the grand jury the first time she testified. And they threatened her with jail time if she did not tell the entire truth this time. And that's why she ratted on Sean Bucci and sent him to jail for 12 years, right? For a crime that she helped commit to, uh, is cause, uh, they caught it. Like you, they get, they're going to catch a light. It's like, they can hold that above your head. So now that they got Higgins lying the first time they got him by the balls, they can do whatever they want to him. Now you can't lie to a federal grand jury. I mean, what, what the fuck is this guy thinking? What was he thinking? Like, they're not going to find that shit out. They're not going to find out the truth. So then he calls back. 
17 seconds later, and this happens. That call lasted for 22 seconds. 22 seconds. Now, when he was first confronted, Brian Higgins first tried to claim that it had to have been a butt dial. Uh, that term butt dial is used by many of the Commonwealth's witnesses to explain the many calls between them and among them. And I, I've never seen a case where there have been so many butt dials, to be frank. So, uh, but uh, Mr. Higgins was already locked in. He already testified his phone was on the bedside table. His butt was in the bed. This, the phone was in the table. This is a quote. The, the, the two could not have met, Your Honor. There was no possibility of a butt dial. The two, and then Higgins okay. admitted that. All right. So, like, oh, so we did admit it. So it's like, because I'm just wondering. It's like, so my phone is over here. I mean, Higgins does have a fat ass, but how is he going to reach his cheek all the way over there? Come on. Come on. You know, it's like, how do you do that? You know? How do you do that? It makes no sense. So he has to admit, right? The two could not have met. The two could not meet. <laughs> and that was look, look at Karen's brother. <laughs> look at Karen's brother. <laughs> look at this smile. He's just like these salty motherfuckers. Mr. Higgins leaving Brian Albert a voicemail. He also admitted under oath that the toll records would have reflected a voicemail if they went to voicemail. Mm -hmm. He they would have wrecked if it went to voicemail, it would have, you know, who else said they went to voicemail, Jennifer McCabe, when she called her sister at 607 and 608, they said those went to voicemail, even though they picked up on the other end. Oh, there's so many lies. There's so many lies. Oh, I just want to rewind this one more time. So we have this order. Records would have reflected a voicemail right. have met your honor. There was no possibility of a butt dial. And then Higgins admitted that. Okay. And that wasn't Mr. Higgins leaving Brian Albert a voicemail. He also admitted under oath that the toll records would have reflected a voicemail if they went to voicemail. He admitted that to call Brian Albert back, he would have had to first reach for his phone, then unlock it with the passcode or face ID. Then he would have to press on Brian Albert's number. And that is exactly what he did. And he testified that that was what he did. He also testified that nobody from the Commonwealth, not Trooper Proctor, not ADA Lally, no one has ever asked him about that phone call from Brian Alberts to, to Higgins or the, refer, the return phone call from Higgins to Albert lasting 22 seconds. Rather than get everyone's phone records, as this court knows, the Commonwealth has fought the defense at every turn in our quest to get the phone records. They've yeah, like if, if they had gotten the phone records, Brian Albert's phone records a long time ago, but it was a fishing expedition, so you couldn't get them, they would already know this. They only found this out because the feds told them. And now they're like, we want the records too. Persuaded this court that we were previously on a fishing expedition. To the extent the court once thought otherwise, it is clear this is no longer a fishing expedition. No, it's not. We do not have to go fishing to wonder anymore whether calls were made. We now know that someone who had been in that house when John O'Keefe arrived called the homeowner at 2.22 in the morning, three and a half hours before John O'Keefe's body was found on the homeowner's lawn. Mm. We learned that neither party to that call ever revealed to police, investigators, or prosecutors that they connected by phone. Seems relevant. In those early morning hours. Uh, Just like Jennifer McCabe never revealed that at around the same time she was Googling asking how long it took for someone to die in the cold, a search that the FBI confirms happened at 2.27 in the morning. Yeah, that part confused me. It says, wait, so it sounds like Higgins admitted it wasn't a butt dial after he got caught lying. So that, yeah, I mean, so he lied. I, that's my interpretation of what it says, is that he lied the first time, and then they confronted him with him, and he's like, yeah, I can't even do the butt dial. Like, that sounds retarded. I can't. Dude, I can't lie to you people like that. That's fucking ridiculous. Because I, I bet you Connolly told him, motherfucker, don't lie. You can't lie. To, they're going to get your ass. You work for the feds. You should know this. Again, about three and a half hours before John O'Keefe's body was found. Now, for his part, <laughs> Brian Albert also first tried to claim that his phone call to Brian Higgins at 222 in the morning was a butt dial. He said that he was awake and watching TV. Okay. But he was called back to the grand jury to testify a second time. So Brian Albert was called twice to testify as well. And the first time 
he said that he was awake when that uh, phone call happened. Did he admit to answering it? Like, did he admit to, again? But also first tried to claim that his phone call to Brian Higgins at 2.22 in the morning was a butt dial. Okay. He said that he was awake and watching TV, but he was called back to the grand jury to testify a second time. The second time, Brian Albert changed his testimony to say that- so Why would he change his testimony? Like if, 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 if he said it was a butt dial watching TV, why would he change his testimony to the sex thing? Is it because like when you're watching TV, there's no motion of the ocean, so you're not gonna butt dial. But like if you're fucking your wife, and that's the first thing here that should be the biggest red flag, is like he they're in their fifties, dude. Brad, no, no, you're not. He's not fucking his wife. Okay, stop it, stop it. He might be fucking someone else. He's not fucking his wife. It's not happening. No fucking way. Especially at two twenty whatever in the morning, ain't happening. No way. That's the kind of thing you do when you're like in a fresh new relationship. You fuck at 222. You just fuck. You got to fuck. This guy, they've been married for like 30 years. They're not fucking at 222. It's just not happening. Okay. Like he might be fucking someone else's wife at 222 because it's hot and it's fresh and it's new. And you're like, yeah, let's go. It's fuck. That's the kind of thing you do when it's like a new relationship. Right. I mean, I, like, hello, <laughs> what the, like, I, it's like, so you just, you want to fuck all the time when it's new, you know, you're like, yeah. Cause you just want to get it. Like, this is fun. This is new to me. This is a good time. Nobody's fucking their wife at two 30 in the morning. Stop it. Stop it. Don't be ridiculous. Everybody knows that everybody agrees with that. Okay. Um, guy woke the wife up. At, I'm fi you're a liar. You didn't fuck your wife at one 30 this morning. It's just not true. Nobody's fucking their wife at that time. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, let's play some more. That at 2.22 in the morning, he and his wife were in bed in an intimate situation. <laughs> he claimed that he had his phone with him in the bed. So now he's claiming that it was during that intimate situation with his wife that he supposedly butt-dialed Brian Higgins. Okay. He had no explanation, however, for how his phone picked up when Higgins called him back oh, 17 yeah. seconds oh, yeah. later. He had no explanation for the 22 second phone conversation that followed. And it's worth noting that Higgins testified he never heard any intimate noises on the other end of the line either. Well, in, in fairness, Brian Albert doesn't seem like the kind of guy that can make a woman come, but that's different. That's not that's a different story. Um, so this is, is there any truth to this? I don't know. So like, okay, so this is Nicole Albert. All right. And it's like, okay, so we've been drinking all day and you know, we've been married for 30, whatever years. And you probably have mistresses on the side or whatever. And we're swinging, but you need to fuck me right now, Brian. Fuck me. Fuck me, Brian. Come on, let's go. I want to fuck right now. It's two 30 in the morning. I don't care how drunk you are. Get your dick up and let's fucking go. Fuck me. Okay, sorry. Okay. So, uh, well, let me just check my phone over here. Okay. So then Nicole's going to come. And I guess the phone here. Okay. So then he's going to start off missionary. So he's like, yeah, fuck me. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the phone is on Nicole's ass. Yeah. Giving it to her. Good. Yeah. Give it. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Fucking bought fugitive unit. Yeah. You like that? You saw me on Boston confidential. Didn't you? You like that? Huh? You like that? Huh? And then she, okay. So let's see if I could call Higgins here. Let's see what happens. Right. Let's go. Mm, yeah, uh, uh. Dude. I can't even get to the passcode part. I can't even get to the passcode part. Yeah. You like that? Oh, uh, you're a naughty girl. Aren't you? You're a naughty girl. Yeah, uh, you like that, huh? 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 Yeah, I bet you do. I bet you fucking do. I can't even get to the passcode part. I can't even do it. So now we'll do role reverse. So then she's gonna she's gonna ride me this time. Okay. So now I'm hold on. We're gonna unplug this. All right. So now Nicole is gonna ride me. Right. And so now I'm gonna butt that. So the, we it, this can't be the first one. So now she can jump on me and all right, we're going to go like this. So the butt phone's on the butt. Yeah. 
Yeah, you like that? I'm in the gang unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a bald head. I shaved my head. You liked it? You liked it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Brian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so hot. And I don't know. Okay. Didn't work. Didn't call Higgins. Okay. Now, could Siri do it? Could Siri do it? I don't know. It's, all right. So we'll do it like this. All right. Oh, yeah, Brian. Siri, call Higgins. Siri, call Higgins. Didn't work. <laughs> Actually, it did. That worked. That worked. I so I entered someone as Higgins in my phone. That actually worked. Maybe Siri did it. <laughs> Maybe, but I took. In fairness, I took her her hand and I put it on the side. You have to do it on the side to do that. So um, <laughs> it made my Siri start talking. I don't know. I don't know. This is investigative journalism here, right, folks? Said I don't recognize <laughs> your voice. So I don't know. I don't it just seems unlikely to me. It just seems unlikely. So that's investigative journalism. We found out that it's unlikely unless they use Siri and unless Nicole or Brian somehow hit the button there and then said and also why is he when he's banging his wife? Yeah, you like that, baby? Call Higgins. Yeah, Higgins. Yeah, Higgins. Like, is he? Why did the name Higgins come up when he was banging his wife? How does that make any sense? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And then Higgins calls him back, and you can't use Siri to answer your phone. So you definitely got to do the passcode then. And I think we agreed. I mean, she was riding her him pretty hard there, and it didn't. Nothing came up. So. I think we can agree science has proven that Brian Albert is, and Brian Higgins are lying. Or at least Brian Albert's lying about the butt. The, oh, yeah, the Brian. Oh, that's not actually. I should have done a real Brian Albert voice because Brian Albert has like a high pitched voice. So he's like, it's weird when you hear Brian Albert talk for the first time because you expect like a manly voice, like, oh, big tough guy. He's like, oh, yeah, ride me, Nicole. Ride me. Oh, yeah. You like that, Nicole? You're a naughty little girl, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you're the hottest of all the weak sisters. Yeah, you're way hotter than Jen. If you were in the class of 94, you would have won. Yeah, 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 you like that? Yeah. So, I don't know. Okay. And you also would have had to say Siri. That's a good point, too. That's journal. That's intimidator journalism right there, folks. So, anyway, I think we can all agree that they're lying. Brian Albert tried to maintain that he butt-dialed Higgins. But again, that would mean that his butt also answered the phone when Higgins called back, and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Both men denied talking to each other despite being confronted with that mountain of evidence by federal prosecutors. But it wasn't just the January. I, I agree with that. I think I think Kevin needs to do another Sim City recreation of the butt dial. Get on that, Kevin. Make yourself useful. We all need a good laugh. January 29th, 2022 calls between Higgins and Albert. Brian Higgins' phone records, we, we learned, reveal that Canton Police Chief Kenneth Berkowitz was involved in interacting with both men shortly after uh, John O'Keefe's body was found. And again, recall, they're supposedly conflicted out of this case. So I'm going to, there's just a question I have, and I'll, I'll let you continue, Mr. Yanetti, but regarding the dates. So the, the dates of the records you're seeking. January 29th. Brian Albert, so January 29th to February Fourth. Or fourth. Fourth or fifth, yes. Fourth. Fourth. That, that's what you're that's seeking. Fine. That's fine. Uh, and for um, Kenneth Berkowitz, January 29th to February 18th, and Brian Higgins, January 29th to February 18th. I need you to explain to me why those dates, why right, February 4th and February 18th. There was, there was testimony in the federal grand jury that Berkowitz and Higgins were, cut, were uh, <laughs> speaking to each other up through the 18th. With regard to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Albert, we had evidence through the 5th. All right, it's not entirely clear from the affidavit, okay? Yeah. All right, so go ahead. Uh, thank you for answering that, and I'll hear you. Go ahead, continue. Right. So uh, as soon as John O'Keefe showed up uh, deceased on Brian Albert's lawn, uh, Canton police decided it might not be a good idea for them to be involved in investigating this case. Uh, and by the way, I I'm reminded 
uh, when I sat down that District Attorney Morrissey announced that publicly. Uh, so we knew that early on. Okay, so is that in his statement that I've had copies of? It is not in the video statement that we uh, moved to sanction him for. It was a previous statement that he issued. All right, so get that to me, okay? That's fine, Your Honor. Uh, so the question is, why was, was Chief Berkowitz inserting himself into this case almost immediately? United States Attorney Joshua Levy questioned Higgins about that in the federal grand jury. Okay. He summarized the phone records in their possession, records the feds have that we do not. Records we're asking this court to order so that both parties in this case can review them. Mr. Levy directed a question to Mr. Higgins in the grand jury where he asked about all of the back and forth between him and Brian Albert and Chief Berkowitz. Quote, you have a three minute call from or with Berkowitz at 722 in the morning okay. on January 29th. Another Higgins call with him for, uh, I'm sorry, then you have a call with uh, Brian Albert that afternoon for 12 minutes. Another call with him for six minutes, another call for a minute, then another call with Albert for 10 minutes, then a call with Berkowitz for four minutes. Uh, Higgins spoke with Berkowitz on January 29th, someone who was uh, conflicted out of yeah, the, the investigation. Yeah, they have not, why is he involved? Why is he so involved? And then they spoke many additional times between January 29th. Remember Berkowitz, that snake. I'll never forget that he, he messaged the goddamn reporter from Boston 25 News who, who tweeted out the only reporter who tweeted that brought that um, John O'Keefe's body was found on Brian Albert's lawn. He put Brian Albert's name out there. Berkowitz messaged a reporter and asked him to take down his tweet because Brian Albert is a quote pillar of the community. And he showed me evidence of that. Why would he do that? Why is cat? Why is this guy so concerned with making sure Brian Albert's name is not out there? They tried so hard. Can, and then he found when he, he went and found some tail light himself somehow. And February four. But Higgins had nothing to do with the investigation, correct? He was a witness in the investigation. How about this? This is okay, great. At that Look point, at this. At that we have point, the chief of police who's supposed. So I'm sorry. I just need to. So at that point, you say he was a witness. I'm sorry. At that point, I'm the sorry? point of the phone calls, he was a witness. Look at yes, this. He was in the home, Your Honor. Okay. It's <laughs> just like what? He's in the home, Your Honor. Like you, at that point. It, where the fuck have you been, lady? How do you not know that? What the fuck? How did she really not know that? Is it because they haven't really gone after Higgins as much that she just didn't know the name? Like that's wild. Yeah, Berkowitz is the old chief, uh, and he's the, also the guy that found taillight on his own like a week later, a week afterwards. Uh, uh, he he was not spoken to by investigators yet. But clearly, he's a witness. He was, he was at the home that night. Um, now, recall that uh, Chief Berkowitz supposedly found a piece of taillight on Brian Albert's lawn on February 4th. Fuck. After that lawn had been searched by trained investigators and other police officers multiple times without finding it. But somehow, Chief Berkowitz was able to spot that piece of taillight while he was driving past the property from his moving vehicle. Impressive. And the phone records show that Berkowitz called Higgins that very day to tell him about the discovery, and then Higgins calls Brian Albert to tell him. Like, the relationship between Berkowitz and Higgins is just fucking odd. Like, Berkowitz wants to be Higgins so bad. Like, those pictures of him, like, dressed up, playing dress up as an ATF guy. Like, he thinks he's so... He, Berkowitz thinks he's so cool. Like, if you ever heard him talk? Oh, uh, he talks like a cop, like a grizzled cop. Oh, yeah, been on the job uh, for 30 years. Yeah. Let me tell you, Brian Albert, pillar, pillar of the community, Brian Albert, great guy. All, all the Alberts, great guys, great guys. They've been on the job a long time. Awesome. You know, and yeah, Higgins, great guy, a federal agent, lets me play dress up with him, lets me put on the bulletproof vest. And, uh, you know, we go to, we, we, we go out there and we, we, we go on. I did a ride along with him one time. Great guy, great guy. He's like buddy, buddy. With Higg Higgins is the guy that collected tickets or sold tickets for Berkowitz's. They're like best friends, retirement party. So like Berkowitz goes by the house, he finds taillight and he's like, you know what I'm going to call? Am I going to call Proctor to tell him about the taillight? Cause he's running the goddamn investigation. Nope. I'm going to call my boy Higgins and be like, yo, guess what I found? Taillight motherfucker. I got taillight. I'm fucking cool. I'm involved now.
look at me. Like he calls Higgins up to like brag about the tail eight. Like Berkowitz is such a loser. Oh my God, he's such a loser. Can't get over him. Uh, in, in a case where we are alleging as part of our defense that there is a third party culprit and at least some people are involved in a conspiracy to cover up the guilt of that third party culprit or culprits, contact between co-conspirators could not be more relevant. Before the feds got involved, we fought for this information, but we were largely unsuccessful. Um, although we never had to prove that the phone records actually contained evidence of the conspiracy. Uh, that's something we couldn't do without having the records themselves. Um, this court has previously ruled that it was all too speculative. Not any more. Not any Not now. Not after we know that the records exist. Not after we know they prove what we suspected that they would prove. We now know that those records will tell a story that could not be more relevant to this case and to our defense. And the problem, Your Honor, is we, we, we know the records are there. We have them in summary fashion, but we don't have them in admissible form. The feds have revealed that they exist, but they haven't released the actual records to us. They have them. We don't have them. That's why we're filing this Rule 17 motion. And again, we've more than met the requirements of Lampron. These records are relevant to our defense because they show suspicious contact between parties we allege to be in a conspiracy. They're relevant because they show the Canton police chief inserting himself into a case when it was previously determined that he was conflicted out. Yes. They are relevant because they impeach the credibility of Commonwealth witnesses who denied talking to each other, yet have no explanation for these records, which again, do not lie. We cannot get the records any other way. We cannot effectively prepare for trial without these records. The Commonwealth could have gotten them, but they chose not to. They fought our efforts. to. He is kind of, as a DeSantis guy, I, I do agree with that. He is... DeSantis is round too. Like DeSantis looks round when he's wearing a suit and Henning has a very similar shape to him. I, I will give you that. I'll give you that. Get them. But again, thank God. Another law enforcement agency stepped yeah, in. Thank God somebody did their done. fucking job. Um, going to trial without these records would violate my client's due process rights. And finally, to the extent that this court previously ruled that our requests were a fishing expedition, uh, we can't maintain that now with a straight face. We now have the receipts. It's confirmed we were never on a fishing expedition. We were merely on a, an, an expedition to obtain relevant material and exculpatory evidence, and we're simply on a mission to defend our client. And I would ask the court to allow this motion. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Lally. So, Your Honor, the, uh, the Commonwealth does not object to this motion. Uh, the only question or clarification that uh, I'd ask for is there seems to be a discrepancy in the dates that I'm, I'm not really finding any support for within the context of the motion. So, so that, that's why I, I asked. Needs better. So, um, my I question was, was a different one as to the dates, though. So okay. when it's directed towards individual people, it's a time period beginning on January 29th. When it's directed towards the cell phone carriers or providers, it begins with a period on January 28th, which is the day prior to anything occurring. So I'm not, not sure why anything on the 28th has any relevance. You lie. There's nothing in the motion that I can glean uh, that indicates that. I don't know if it's a Scrivener's error or if there's some other... Scrivener's error. For, that's you know, your that, team uh, that does that. ...for those providers to be starting a day early. What do you say about that, Mr. Yannetti? Your affidavit says the 29th. Right. Um, I would orally amend that to the 29th, Your Honor. We're fine with that. All right. Um, I'm going to hear from the third party counsel if they want to be heard. You know, if I may, just one sure. further thing. I did speak with counsel, uh, it's attorney uh, Kenneth Anderson, uh, who represents uh, Mr. Berkowitz. Uh, there's no objection on behalf of, of his client. He didn't okay, even object. You. He didn't even object. All right, so Mr. Conley. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, well, with respect to my general arguments, we'll just rest on what it, I'll rest on what I said previously. Um, and we respect the party's positions. I do just, I just want to point out one thing with respect to the factual assertion. Um, I don't have the privilege of seeing the grand jury testimony, um, but I but I can represent to the court that before my client ever tested at the testified at the grand jury, he voluntarily appeared for an interview with the U.S. Attorney's Office. I attended that interview, and at that interview, he volunteered to the U.S. Attorney's Office that on the more that morning he spoke to both Albert and Berkowitz. He was not asked and did not give a rundown of how many times, but he acknowledged long before he testified at the grand jury that he did speak with both of them that day. I don't think that impacts the substance of the arguments, but I just wanted to know that. Forever. Okay, so just so I'm clear, the, the Commonwealth hasn't objected to these records for that period of time that appears to be relevant to yeah, that And so I will waive arguments on that, Your Honor. All right, and, and does counsel object to these records? Uh, Mr. Henning, on behalf of Brian Albert, all right, and, and counsel on behalf of... Oh, that doesn't concern you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, defendant filed, Mr. Yannetti filed a motion that I just got as I was walking out here. Right. We're not asking to be heard on that motion. I had alerted your clerk that it would be coming. Um, it's filed with a motion to impound as well. I figured I would hand deliver it today. Okay, the great. just got it today, so they'll need time to assess that. All right. So today, all pre-trial non-evidential can't be here next week. I, I cannot. And, and on that point, Your Honor, I, I think the court probably will oh, be here that's for why that. We did. So that's why we did. Commonwealth have anything that it expects to be filing uh, by the end yeah, of the day? That's about it. So that's, um, you know, that's all they got is like that Brian Albert uh, apparently like if they're saying butt dialing at this point, like dude, how many lies think of all the things that they've had to explain 
all the nonsense to, the, to, to explain this shit. Like Jennifer McCabe calling at uh, calling her sister at 607 and 608. She says it went to voicemail. The calls were answered. There's seven and eight seconds. She deleted all her calls. How do you, like, why would you do that? Everything that they do is shady and they try to come up with like an explanation for them and they just can't. It just sounds like this is what happens. Why did you call him? Well, I butt dialed him. I was fucking my wife because the TV story that he initially went with didn't make any sense because you can't butt dial someone when you're watching TV. You got to have some movement in there. So I was just fucking my, I fucked my wife so hard at 2.30 in the morning that she somehow, her ass just, I mean, because like, how do you, to move, to get the passcode, Oh, the face came up. Hold on. I got the facial. That's the problem. Facial. Um, you got to do this thing. So then face ID comes up. Doesn't, And then you got to do the code. Okay. And then, so they did the code. Like it's a six digit code. What are the odds of getting that right? Come on. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. And if they're lying, it's just, my question is why lie? Like if they're lying about shit like that, how obvious it does does it have to be that these people are covering something up? I mean, it just needs to end and I can't wait for this shit to end. Um, I'm, I'm happy personally that just my shit has died down a little bit. Cause I hate even being the fact that my, not my personal baggage really became part of the story. That was not my intention at all. Um, but I, I'm glad that we're back to talking about the case again. And I really think something big is gonna, we're going to find some more bombshells on Tuesday. All right. All right. Um, couple turtle chats here to read real quick. Andrea sends five bucks says it was said on Sean's show that Chris Albert now lives in Stoughton. That's just what a source told me. I I've been, I have to look into that more, but we're going to, I don't know. Get the fuck out. Huck. I don't know. I can't confirm that a hundred percent, but that's what a source has told me. So, uh, we'll look into that. I don't know. But if, uh, if that's true, he, how can he be on the select board anymore? I don't know. We'll see. And thank you, Paige. I appreciate that, Paige B. Shout out to Paige B there. Um, next up. Where did the donos go? Where the fuck did it go? Oh, right, here we go. Um, Chris, you are not, Chris, you and your shitty family are not welcome here. Go away. That's what Andrea says. Thank you. Uh, 25 bucks from Courtney. She says, did you see that Kevin Reddington changed his profile picture the week they locked you up? I just went looking for the picture, but he's deleted it since he was making fun of the fact that you were in jail, it, it enraged me. You can't delete a profile picture on Facebook. You can't delete it. It always comes up as your previous profile picture. You cannot delete it. I don't think you can. He seems bipolar or two-faced if he was messaging you words of encouragement simultaneously, or he was just trying to stir shit up to piss off your supporters. I don't know, but it's very strange. I do know that he changed his profile picture to Jennifer Altman the day it was announced that uh, that Ken Mello was doing some shit with her and he doxed her and stuff like that. They definitely did that. Um, that was weird. That was definitely weird. He's kind of a troll on social media. Kevin Reddington on Facebook is basically a troll. <laughs> uh, but anyway, next. Uh, Pamela sends eight bucks and says, our, our Rottweiler Angus is eight years old today. Please wish him a happy birthday. Hashtag free. Happy birthday, Angus. And uh, again, uh, oh, and happy birthday to Meredith. And there's probably other people who are watching right now. It's probably a bunch of people's birthdays, but happy birthday to all you motherfuckers. All right. I mean, there's 3,500 people watching. That means there's probably 10 people whose birthday is today just watching. So, all right, next up. Suzanne sends 10 bucks and says, how dare you violate Raggedy Ann? I fucked the shit out of Raggedy Ann. Like, I, dude, she got a... <laughs> She didn't call me daddy at least. So she's not going to pretend to be pregnant. So I got that going for me. So thank you. Uh, Jamie sends $50 and says, there is light at the end of the dark tunnel. Freedom reigns and justice for Officer O'Keefe. Oh my God, you're violating Raggedy Ann as I type this, Lord. <laughs> thank you. But there is, you know, it's, uh, I, I, there is, I hope there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I just, I know it's going to end. I know we're the good guys are going to win in the end. I just want to get it over with to just throw it in all their faces. Cause I'm so sick of these motherfuckers. <laughs> I was so sick of reading their bullshit. And I just can't wait to be right. And I will be right. I will be right when it's all 
said and done. Uh, next up. Uh, 10 bucks from Kyle. Yana, there wasn't any cheek clapping on their end of the phone. And I know what cheek clapping sounds like. It's what B Higgy does, baby. Bust gangs on and clap cheeks. Brian B Higgy Higgins. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate that. <laughs> Jonathan sends five bucks as Aiden to entirely be fair. We don't have solid evidence that any woman has ever came. They could all have been lying the dawn of time. That's still a matter of faith, but it's my bet. B Rye didn't even get close. See, I disagree. You, you can tell when a woman comes, you know, it's, you know, it's very obvious, you know, it, it can get all over the floor. Like there's, there's, it, it, you know, trust me, if, if you don't know, then you haven't done it, but you know, you know, sorry, sorry, man. Thank you for the $5, but you never made it. It didn't happen. I'm sorry to bust your, it didn't happen. Okay. Um, all right. Um, any other, do we have any turtle chats here? Um, I mean, uh, any, whatchamacallit cash apps, Bob, since two dollars and twenty two cents, he goes. I drive to New York, drink all day, fuck with my wife, no shot. Okay, thank you very much. All right, if anyone else wants to donate, the link is at the top for Turtle Chat. Uh, why don't we do a little Q and A? You guys have any questions? Shorter show tonight, uh, but uh, yeah. No, I mean, I don't want to get too into it. I don't want. To... There was a bathroom incident. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Um, anybody else? How? How? Oh, stop it. Stop it. Again, this is, you can answer that out there. You can find out. There's ways of finding out. Anyone have any questions? If it's all over the floor, it's probably P. <laughs> uh, again, this is a family show. I don't want to talk too much about that, but you know. Andrew Johnson update. Uh, we have something coming with that. Stay tuned. We, we have something in the works for that. Uh, Krusty Panties admitted that at her hearing. So check this out. Where'd it go? Listen to this. He is angry and upset with me because I have been cooperating with the prosecution and giving them um, information on him. A lot of the quotes that he puts in here that are not <laughs> relevant to the statute at all, where I say that he can blame me for all of his problems is because I am furnishing information. This is retaliatory. The um... Interesting. We'll just leave it at that. She said in the hearing that she's furnishing information for the Commonwealth against me. The same district attorney's office that refused that defied a court order from a judge in Suffolk County telling them to hand over my phone. And as a result, charges were dropped that helped this woman's family. Interesting. Who's going to jail? That was a question I asked Sean. I don't know if we really got an answer for that. Um, but I, 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 again, the three that I on Bukaki, Proctor and, and Tully, they got to go to jail. Those three, they got to, and uh, what you call it too? I mean, obviously John McCabe, fucking. I'd love to see Colin. I'll fuck go to jail. I'll... Scary little pussy. Okay. Um, anyway, what time is court on Tuesday? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. They're gonna walk. I don't know. I, I don't think so. I don't think. I don't know. Ryder will be here on Saturday. Get my doggy. That's gonna be awesome. This is a family show, actually. A lot of people, yeah, their family members watch it. Yeah. Family show, you, you fucked a doll. <laughs> it didn't penetrate, though. It didn't penetrate. Uh, what are your plans for the week? Same shit as I do every week. Uh, oh, I fucked Raggedy Andy? Oh, shit. Okay, all right. <laughs> um... What big news do you think will come out at the hearing? I just more, I have no idea. That's what makes this so compelling is ooh, what bombshells are they going to drop that the feds found this week? They have 3,100 pages worth of shit. They just keep dropping stuff. 
So last week was, you know, I mean, that was interesting, the butt dial stuff, but like wasn't as juicy as the, like hearing that John wasn't hit by a car. That was wild. When are you coming back to Southie? Did I see you there? Did I see? I love Southie. I'll be there. You'll see me again. Um, you can do a new freestyle. Yeah, I haven't done one. You're right. I need to get back in my freestyle game. You're right. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that was interesting how the Boston police showed up in heavy numbers at the recent hearing. Um, oh, you know what we didn't talk about? Let's see. We didn't talk about um, this other shit, like this woman. And I want to talk about that. Hold on. This woman. All right. So, oh, dude, the, the, they're so mad about this one. The fact that I outed this woman. So Tom DeRozier, you guys might know Tom. He runs the Tom CP. He's a turtle rider who comes to every hearing and he just live streams himself outside of court and like gets the mood of the place. You know what people are saying and stuff like that. Um, he does seem like something always happens. Like he, he gets, they get like, they hit him and shit. He's allowed to film. You can, you like people seem to think if somebody's filming you, I could just hit and I don't like you. I can just hit your camera and cause that keeps happening to Tom. Rur. They keep hitting his camera. And this woman did the same thing. Like, check this out. So this, these are all the McAlberts there. First of all, the way they just assemble as a group like this and like walk in together. Cause they're so afraid to get yelled at, but cause they are so, they think like if we run it, if we come in a pack, that will make us less shameful. I mean, all of these people should be named and shamed for what they're doing. They're sub they're walking in with cop killers. They're walking in with the people who murdered John O'Keefe. They're supporting this farce. Anybody who associates with them, public like you, you make this choice. If you publicly associate with these people and defend cop killers, you're a piece of shit. You like you can't be like, I don't know, they're my friend. Well, they killed a cop, so you you still want you want to be friends with them. You can be friends. Like uh, if I killed a cop, my friends would not be coming to court and like, you know, being seen with me. Like if I was in jump, they would be like distance themselves from me. But these people, they want to be in the cool click. So they keep supporting a stupid friend. And it's this shady real estate company, Ravis. All these motherfuckers work for this Ravis. It's like the pro cop killing real estate. Like they all support. There's a few others, uh, realtors that I recognize on their website. They were also with this group here. They're all just like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, we support cop killers. It's what we do here. Ravis Real Estate. We sell homes where people are murdered. We don't disclose this to the people who buy the homes. We sell them for $50,000 $50, less than asking price so they can get the fuck out of town. And then we don't let people take pictures. Multiple people contacted me that actually looked at this home and they said that they were, they, they thought it was so shady because they were told they can't take pictures. It was bizarre. Like, so fuck that real estate company. Ravis real estate is pro cop killer. That's what they are. They, 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 they're taking a stand. You understand this? They're taking, they could just be like, well, we don't have a position on the Karen Reed case. No, no, they do. They're pro cop killer. That's what they are. Look at her. Tap it, tap it. Thank you. So people are like, oh, we staged it. Tom has a little tripod that he uses to do it. And she look at what she does here. Look what this cow does. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch my like look at this. So you see, she brings her camera into the foreground to block his. Like, but like you can't film, motherfucker. We're in public. I hate when they. Hmm, no, you're not gonna be able to film us. No, grow up. And she makes contact with the phone. See that? That's the contact. The, that's the sound there. It, it hits him. Hits his phone. He's moving his little thing around. And it comes in contact with it. And then see, she does it again. And then makes contact again. Tap it. Tap it. And then she taps it. 
Thank you. I don't get that part. I don't understand why Tom said thank you there. But her arm is extended. Her arm moves to where he's going. So what I don't get, maybe somebody can help me out in the comments. Why did he say tap it? Tap it. Is he like Tessner? Like tap it. I fucking dare you. Is that what he's saying? And she does. She hits his fucking foot. Now I've seen these idiots on Twitter, which again, don't waste your time on Twitter. But she said something like that. He, I opened an app. I created. Oh, okay. I don't know what that means, but. Oh, Apple has a new feature. You can share contact info with a tap. They were talking about an app. So what's the, what do you mean? They're trans. Uh, I've seen people say this. They transfer data. Explain this to me how this works. So you can tap somebody's phone and get the data off of their phone. Is that true? That seems that's crazy. If that's true, he can grab her info. Is that true? She taps his phone. He gets her. Con Is that true? Is this well, everybody saying this? Hold on. Is that actually true? I did not know that. It is. So if I tap my phone on someone else's phone, I get all your contacts? Interesting. If you have an iPhone 15, I did not know that. That's wild. So does it have to do, do both phones have to be a 15? No, you have to approve the share, people are saying. Okay. All right, anyway, uh, whatever. So anyway, so the, I, basically she deserves it, right? Uh, I mean, she, she's the one that did this, like. And it, it's on the tripod, so it's like fucking false. You know, she's hit it. Okay, so she chose to do this, right? And the, tr oh my gosh, some of these accounts, they're so mad. They're so mad about it. And her name is Kelly Lamb. She's a realtor. And I just pointed this out. It's like if Kelly Lamb wants to behave like this in public, if she wants to support cop killers and, you know, uh, uh, oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, God. Paint me like one of your French girls, Tom DeRozier. <laughs> if she wants to do this, that's, that's, their ch that's her choice, right? And this one, too. Oh, my. I mean, okay. Same shit. Same shit. And she, she sent a message to somebody. I think it was Jennifer O'Donnell. She sent this whole text message about like, I have nothing against you previously, blah, 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 blah. I was protecting her, Jennifer McCabe, from being hit with the phone. No, you weren't. No, Jennifer McCabe was nowhere near Tom DeRozier. There was also no railing. He was sticking a phone over a railing. That's not what happened. It's unfortunate that one of my good friends is part of this situation. Yeah, it is part of this situation. She created the situation by Googling how long to die in cold at 2 27 AM. And you're, you're, you do not have to stay friends with her. If she does that, you're choosing to, yeah, you're choosing to support her. Yes. A cop killer. I hope you can respect that. Nope. Don't, don't have any respect for you supporting cop killers. Definitely, definitely not. And then this is them on their way out. And I did not realize that was Kerry Roberts. She's put on some weight. I like how they're all carrying their phones too. Like it's like they're fucking like their swords, like protecting the queen or some shit like <laughs> on their phones. Like, what are you doing with that? What are you doing? That Google search happened, huh? How evil. Look at her. <laughs> She's fucking insane, dude. Insane. 
Laugh. Your your good friend was dead. Passed out on a lawn. You're heartless. You are heartless. You're heartless. That's all right. Wait till LG starts fucking Matt and takes all your money. I'm going to roll on the floor dying. She already has. Matt McCabe is going to go to jail if that happens more than likely, because that's what every single person who does that uh, ends up uh, arrested for assault and battery. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. There's that. And like, I love how Jen just can't help herself. Like even her family's like, dude, cut the shit, Jen. Stop being a cunt. Like, stop it. Let's just go. She can't help herself. She th- like, she's insane, dude. Look how evil she, look at this face. She's demented. Just look at that. Demented. She thinks it's so funny. Notice she has her phone in her pocket. She's recording. Yeah. Yeah. List demented. So anyway, um, do we have any more turtle? Yeah, I got a, I got another cash app here. I got to read. This one is from, who's this one from? Lane sends $15 and says, Support and love from Florida. Stay strong. You're the best. Thank you very much, Lane. I will do just that. Okay. All right. Anyone else have any questions they want to ask me before we call it a night? Thank you for subscribing. I will definitely keep the content coming. Appreciate that. fuck was that uh something's on a timer i did get the picture of jen recording in court it was at it's at the end of court you can take your phone out then it's really not a big deal uh, it's not the scandal that we think it is um because you're on your way out anyway i haven't seen plevin's new picture i don't pay attention to plevin i try not to I recommend other people do the same. Anyone else have any other questions they want to ask me before we call it a night? No trial. Um, It's going to be pushed back. I bet you it gets pushed back to to at least May. And that's just going to give the feds more time to do what they got to do. I mean, I got nothing to Kim fair. She's just a nut job. You write about it once you get the point. They're all nuts. They're all nuts. And and bottom line is nobody believes anything they say. Like nobody believes that like I'm a domestic abuser. Nobody believes that I intimidated witnesses. They just don't like me. These people that that's all it comes down to. And they're pretending to believe it. Like <laughs> they couldn't have gotten behind a less credible person. So I'm not the least bit, the least, the least bit worried about it. Is Alan coming Tuesday? Yes, Alan is coming Tuesday. I got another cash app here. Let's see. From Paula. She goes, I don't lie about fucking at 2 to 3 a.m. Good for you, Paula. Getting it in. Good for you. God bless you. You're one of the you're one of the rare ones. Brian Albert's not doing that though. Can I promise no more sex doll ever again? I can't. I can't promise that. I can't do it. Hmm. I don't fucking know. I don't care. Probably not. It's just like, if it's like, it's just, it's, it's scary having a stalker like this. Let's just put it that way. Like I have a, I have a stalker who has a piece of paper that follows me around and I just, I don't want anything to do with them at all. And I just want to move on with my life. So I wish, let's just put it that way. I wish that was the situation, but I think we can all agree that's not happening because if the second that she moves on to somebody else, she's not stalking me anymore. Like if, imagine that was your girlfriend. It's like, so what are you doing today? Oh, I'm going to go stalk the last guy I was with and follow him around and hold this piece of paper and, and try to kick him out of stuff. What nobody would put up with that. So I wish, I wish, I wish Grant would take one for the team. But, you know, I, I highly doubt it, unfortunately. I highly doubt it. 
<sighs> All right. Anyone else have any questions? You can marry your stalker. Ew. Stop it. Yeah, he's he's never kissed a girl. I mean, even it wouldn't be that hard, but you know. Heard that before. Zip up the intimidator. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. I'm gonna be more careful now, believe me. Uh Ratchet Madness will be starting next month in, in April. Absolutely. Yeah, they're going to have some fun with that, and I encourage them to. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Do you have any uh, appearances, podcasts? This, you know, Howie seems to invite me on a lot, so we'll see. Yes, I did see that. It was a good interview. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mary Poppin. I appreciate that. I feel healthy. I feel good. I'm happy. Let's just put it that way. I'm very happy. Like everything happened for a reason. Like I needed, like I said, my personal life was shit, man. It was shit. I was hanging with the wrong crowd. Just going places that I shouldn't have been going. You know, hanging with the wrong crowd. Like ratchet people. Like and uh it had to hit rock bottom had a little life detox went to jail for a little bit and i feel much better now i'm gonna make better choices surround myself with better people and uh i've already begun to do that let's just say that all right um thoughts on court tv yeah it'd be nice if they got some panelists that actually knew uh what the fuck they were talking about i am I'm not going to get into that, but if coming off of Adderall, I did go back on, but, um, it's, it was a weird transition, especially dealing with all the anxiety of like court and stuff, you know? So did Joe G earn a spot in ratchet man? Who's Joe G? I don't know. Joe G. Um, I, I, I haven't talked to Jerry much. No, at all. Uh, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, those would be cool. Those would be cool. Sorry. Uh, pussy is a hell of a drug. Yeah. All right. Just trying to read the comments. You doing a live panel for Court Tuesday? We'll, or maybe I'm going. Or maybe I'm going. We'll find out. We'll find out Tuesday. Might go. Might not. Might go. Might not. We'll see. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. We can all make better life choices, but it happened for a reason. And let's just say, like, I know that uh, is. I feel I'm much, much happier now. Like, let's just put it that way. I'm much, much happier now. Uh, of Joe's here. I think we all know who Joe is. Hey, Joe. Um, hi, Joe. We know who you are. Okay. It's the Joe. Oh, it's the Joe from Twitter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That Joe. The, that's a good question. Sh should Joe be in ratchet madness? We all know who Joe is from Twitter, John Smith. And should they be in ratchet madness? I'm cause I'm like, Joe just wants attention. And I don't know. It's like, Joe's pretty ratchet. Don't get me wrong. And would be a very high seat in ratchet madness. But Joe just wants attention from me. Like that's a big thing. And I don't know if I want to give Joe any attention. Okay. No, the, the, the police put out a, a, a thing looking for the people that I put in that video that beat the shit out of that guy at the St. Patrick's day parade. Um, so vulnerability is not weakness. Well, thank you. No, but I really feel like it happened for a reason. You know what I mean? Like I've talked to, uh, just put it this way, two, three years from now, you'll see. like, it's, I'm going to look back at this and be like, that was the best 
thing that ever happened to me being incarcerated. Best thing. And you'll see why. You'll see why. Ignore Joe. Yeah, we all know who we know who Joe is, Tina. We know who Joe is. Who won Ratchet Madness last year? Mike Fucci. Mike Fucci won. The trolls are starting with the doll. Nice. They're, they're doing exactly what I say. See, they do everything I tell them to do. They read every article I publish. They watch every show I do. They they love it. They can't get enough Turtle Boy. They can't fucking stop. They're addicted to it. My haters are addicted to it. They fucking love it. They love it. Um. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep up. Uh, who would you watch for Karen Reed updates? The glare said glare is great. Glare is great. Uh, I watch the glare all the time. LTL is great. Uh, Dave is great. Uh, uh, Paul Christopher's new channel is great. Melanie Little is awesome. Awesome. So they're all good. Uh, okay. <laughs> How many troll accounts died this week with Richie? I don't know. I love how they're acting like it's like this big loss, like Riccio. I mean, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, like um, like I don't give a fuck. Like Riccio dying, it's like like I said, it's sad that anybody chose to live their life the way that he did. That anybody so life, anybody's life was so devoid of like meaning and happiness that they had to act the way they did. But I don't. It's like he's not gonna like he's just a loot. He he just took up space. The guy was his legacy. He's the guy that shows up to troll people in person because he has nothing better to do in his life and like hijack press conferences, ask stupid questions, make it all about him. You know, uh, you know, like that's it. So it's like, to me, it's like life is better without that around. So it's no big loss. That's what I, I mean. That's the truth. Everything Kirk Minahan said, I co-signed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was his last tweet. Like he died thinking about me. Fucking owned, you know, got him. All right. Um, who's this Joe blow? You know, we all know who Joe is. We all know who Joe is. Joe is very desperate for attention. Um, Joe should move on with their life. Does Jen show up on uh, Tuesday? I say no, because I think she knows when some, she doesn't show up when something big is coming. Yeah, Brandy Churchwell also great. She, her podcast is also fantastic. I'm I'm forgetting other people too. Um, there's other people. They're all great. They're all great. There's so many ways to consume Karen Reed content out there. And no offense to anybody I didn't mention. Yeah, Duke. I like Duke this year. Duke looked real good today. And I never pick Duke. I don't really usually like Duke, but I like Duke this year. I think they're going to be good. Yeah, Chile de Castro is interesting. Uh, Chile de Castro just got sentenced to 180 days in jail because he was rude to uh, any to a to a bailiff. I mean, for those of you who don't know Chile, I'm not I'm not going to defend Chile. I'm not a Chile fan, but like I, what I don't like about that is just like the people who are taking joy in it. Like, cause Chili is an unlikable person and they're like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. Take that Chili. It's like, you're cool with the guy going to jail for 180 days. Cause he pissed off a judge. Like that's not what jails are for just cause the judge is having a bad day. You know? All right. Anybody else? Oh, meek mouse. Stop it. Yeah, Chili is in jail. He is in jail, absolutely. See, I disagree, Jen. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be, just because we, we shouldn't want people to be quiet for six months and send them to jail. Jail is a serious thing. We should not want people who are annoying and talk too much to go to jail. Like, that is not the kind of country I want to live in. Yeah, Joe needs to chill the fuck out. Chill out, Joe. Chill out. Um, 
I'd love to talk to Jerry Thornton because he seems to be taking an interest in this case. He linked to my Twitter and his in his uh, thing. So if anybody tell Jerry tell Jerry to reach out to me if he wants to talk, we could talk. Oh, go away, Joe. Um, anybody else? All right. Anybody else? Yeah, Page B gets it. It's it's odd, you know? It's odd. Oh yeah, DUI guy's awesome. Had people on people arrested for public protests in Massachusetts. Yes, he did from Lawrence. DUI guy's great. I love Larry. Uh, somebody, uh, Kimberly Blinn, uh, Ratchet Madness is this tournament we hold every year. We have the 64 top ratchets. I'll explain the whole thing. Uh, go read some of our Ratchet Madness from last year. We basically pick, um, we pick uh, who who is going to, um, you know, be doing that. Who's going to advance, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, Alex gets it. Okay. Anyone else? Um are you happy with the outcome of your chat with Sh Shonda? Absolutely. I thought it was great. I thought it was really cool. Oh, and shout out to paid send $5 says shout out to Steve Cody who threw hundreds of fake $100 bills with the motto, with the motto Colin did it in front of D and E that was brilliant. More cops on the scene than for John O'Keefe. Okay. Not a Steve Cote fan. Definitely not a Steve Cote fan. Very annoying. Okay. Um, oh, Pierpont Fisher sends $2 and says for raggedy ants therapy, keep up the good work. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Bob Mata. Yeah, he's great. I've had, I've been on Bob's and he's been on mine, I believe. Um, yeah. I'd love to talk to Jerry Thornton about the Karen Reed case. Does Jerry do a podcast with them? I don't even know. Does he have a podcast or does he just blog for them? All right. Anyway, I guess we'll call it a night. We will call it a night and we will see you guys all on Tuesday night for the next episode of Turtle Boy Live. Thank you guys for all the support, the donos, free Karen Reed. Oh, I mean, I was out like, I was out like, so I went out, I had some, a friend. Uh, we went out last night and, uh, I was out like in Southie and this guy comes up to me and he's like, uh, when they come up to you and everybody comes up to me now and they're like, they just go free Karen Reed. Like, that's what they say when they see me free Karen Reed. And it's so cool. It's just like, it's fucking everywhere, man. Everybody, you go anywhere in this state, everybody knows about this movement. So free Karen Reed, free me, free turtle boy, free can't nine, free us all. And uh, we will see you guys all on Tuesday for the next episode of Turtle Boy Live. Peace to your bum crease. See ya.